Morning, gang. I was convinced for some uh, reason this morning when I came into our, our little studio here that it was Wednesday. Don't know why that was, but it's not, of course. It's Thursday, gang. Welcome along. It's Thursday, the 14th of May 2020. It's United Kingdom Talk on a Thursday. Had some internet issues last uh, yesterday, which uh, I'm very pleased to say wasn't anything to do with me because straight after the show, I went out and I cut my hedge with my brand new uh, hedge cutter as provided and sent to me as a gift by dear, dear nephew, Gary Butler and Stacey Butler and the family, Harry Butler, Evie Butler and Olivia Butler. And it's Harry's birthday today. And because it's a member of my family. It's a member of the family. It's their birthday today. Harry today is seven years old. Yeah, baby. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Harry. Happy birthday to you. And I have a picture of myself and Harry earlier on today um, having a little bit of a FaceTime together, boys and girls. Oh, uh, what, have I got, what, what have I got to push to get that? Hang on a minute. There we are. Just a moment. One moment, please. There we are. There's me and Harry. <laughs> There's me and Harry having a face ache this morning <laughs> in our brand new Spaceman outfits. Check that out. <laughs> Isn't that good? Happy birthday, Harry. He's got a whole stack of presents stacked up in front of his television up in uh, uh, Lincolnshire. It's fantastic. He's going to have a fantastic day. And I'm just, I should have been up there, of course, um, uh, so I shall miss out on the birthday and the opening of the presents and all the cakes and everything else like that. Very disappointing. But there you go. What can you do? Happy birthday, Harry. Hope you have a wonderful time uh, this morning. Oh, that's popped open there, isn't it? Look at that. Look how old my neck looks now. Isn't it awful? <laughs> And the hair needs a cut. Look, I mean, it's practically touching the floor, this hair now. Anyway, so happy birthday, Harry. Um, uh, yes, I, I had, I cut my new, uh, my hedge, or part of it anyway. Do you know, I'll be honest with you, it was a blessing in disguise. Because, you know, when the internet went off yesterday, because, you know, like, you look at a job and you think, oh, I'll do that in an hour. <laughs> and the rest, mate. Dear me, I went down the stairs uh, straight after the show, turned off the computer when we had the problems, walk away from the problem, it'd be all right the next day. And um, uh, I got my new, brand new uh, hedge trimmer out, started oiling it, and off to work I went. Uh, as delivered by the stunningly gorgeous Argos boy. Oh, God! He's about 27 years old, 28, maybe something like that. Absolutely gorgeous as he got out of his little van. I was watching him with my beady eyes, dear. As he, I, I, I thought I wanted to tell him that, you know, there was a bit of dirt on his T-shirt and perhaps he'd like me to wash it for him while he waits in the living room. But of course, social distancing. So we couldn't try that one, unfortunately. But never mind. <clears throat> Anyway, so I oiled all the blades. Must oil blades. Very important that. You know, it's and on hair cutter things. You know, bzz, 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 on those hair cutter things. Must oil the blades. You'll soon know about it if you don't oil it and it starts tugging away at your hair and pulls it out instead of cutting it. Crawl, that's painful. Anyway, so I went out there and I started and I did the front bit first. There is a communal area that I kind of took it upon myself to look after. In the communal area, in the middle, there's an awful lot of brambles. Uh, not so much in the middle, but to the side of my house. And <clears throat> about four years ago, I took it upon myself to, to clear that area and put in shrubs. And I went down the garden centre over a long period of time and would go and buy a couple of shrubs, put them in, clear that area. Uh, and it was, but, but it's brambles that are over there, you know, um, blackberry bramble things and they grow so easily I have to tell you so so easily do these things grow and you've got to keep them down you know by me mowing them all down to the, that don't kill them no they come back with, with great gust off the next year I have to tell you and every year I have to go around a couple of times so I've just done it once already now, and you go around with the hedge trimmer usually, which of course I haven't been able to do it because my one was stuck up at the caravan. Um, so I go around with this thing <clears throat> and uh, cut back all the brambles and uh, all the rest of it that's going along there and uh, looking better at that side. Then I started on 
uh, in my back and my I've got a small hedge where the bins are very very small one so I cut that down because that was all over the place you know growing at different levels that's nice and I say it straight I mean <laughs> it's not straight but it's better than what it was <laughs> I had a gardener come around once and he said, um, what is it you want me to do, mate? I said, well, can you um, do the hedge? I said, I'm no good at cutting it straight. And he said, well, neither are we. <laughs> I think it's, I, people are very clever, aren't they? When they cut the shapes. We mentioned this the other week in their hedges, like um, chickens and things like that they make and rude things. If it was my nephew doing it, he'd, he'd do something rude, rude, stand there, think it was very funny, and his wife would be going to spare in the other room. Gary! Gary! It'd be a bit like that, it would. <laughs> so I then come out the back garden and I started doing that. On it, on the other side of the fence is a row of Lalandi. And as you know, you've got to keep these down. Otherwise, they will grow so big. And once they've grown so big and then the trunks start getting fatter and you can't go with them with a lawnmower, a uh, uh, hedge trimmer then, you've got to get the saw out. So you've got to keep those level. And there was a couple there that had just got a little bit too thick because I hadn't done them for, well, since last year, you see. They just got too thick for the thing to go along. So I had to get the uh, saw out, but that's not too, not, not too difficult. The only thing is, where I've got climbers in the garden, okay, they've now, some of those climbers have climbed up the fence across the land eye. And I, I mentioned this uh, back in spring, uh, sorry, back in um, uh, last month, I think it was, or the month before, I mentioned to you that some of my climbers had gone out of the garden, up the, up the fence, across the Lalandi, and are now going up the pine trees. And it flowered this year, all these little white flowers. And I thought, where's that come from? My garden. And I didn't want to chop those. So as I've got to the bits that are climbing over, and there's, there's more and more of them, you've got to cut, and you can't always use the hedge trimmer. You've got to get the, you know, the cutters, secateurs, and do them manually. Otherwise, you'll cut through that, and that thing that you've spent ages going up the, has spent ages climbing up the tree, you'll kill that as well, you know? And not the just trim the land diet. But um, yeah, so I've done about half. <laughs> about half. I started at half past ten. And I finished at about half past two yesterday. I mean, that to me is a day's work now. Poor old soul I am, dear. I can't keep up with it all. I just, just can't keep up with life in general. So that's what I did yesterday. Um, haven't seen the new Killing Eve um, uh, programme yet. I have seen Hospital. Uh, now, I was watching episode one of that. <clears throat> and there was an old bloke in there, bless his heart. And he'd recovered. And I rang up my sister, I think it was uh, yesterday, yesterday morning, and we were talking about hospital. She said, oh, when it's sad, the old man dies at the end. And I'm like, does he? She said, yeah, the old Jewish man. And I'm thinking, that old man never died at the end. And I said to her, he didn't die at the end. She said, yes, he did. The old Jewish man, it's so sad. I said, are you talking about episode one? No, episode two, which, of course, I hadn't watched yet. I said, you've just told me. Oh, she's very pleased with that. Oh, <laughs> I've just told you what happens at the end of it now. Ruined it, dear. Ruined it. We like to see the story. I mean, I'm not going to be pleased someone died at the end, but I'd like to see the story before we get there. Uh, maybe that's how she reads books. My sister is a great reader. She's got one of them things, you know, the electronic reading things. What's it? The Amazon. The Kindle. She's got a Kindle. She likes to read. I reckon she starts on the back page. She likes to know what's happened before the whole story and then goes back and reads the whole story. That's got to be what she's doing. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so I watched the episode two of Hospital, um, which was filmed at the Royal Free Hospital, which is where I go for my um, twice annual visits. <clears throat> and... Uh, it, 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 oh God, it was just amazing what was going on there. They were literally, in the first episode, I told you yesterday, well, I mean, if you saw it, because <laughs> it all went wrong yesterday, uh, there were all these people that, they were suddenly, they were just working on a normal day, and suddenly all these people are coming in with breathing difficulties, and it got busier and busier and busier. And I told you they'd now converted the top few floors just to the virus patients. Right. And then it followed some people who were in there. One particular lovely community nurse, bless her. Uh, she was 60, 40 to ending up in heaven. She pulled through. <clears throat> she pulled through. Wonderful old lady, bless her. And she'd spent her entire um, 
life since she started working dedicated to the NHS. And as she came out of the ward ready to go home, they're all lined up and they're all clapping and it brings a tear to your eye. I love it. I love it when something works like that, you know. And uh, indeed, uh, in yesterday's show, the old Jewish man indeed did die at the end, which I didn't know because he suddenly he became a bit better, but then went back down again, you know. So one of those things, uh, may he rest in peace. And his wife, of course, they interviewed her crying on the telly. But the one thing with the hospital, they were running out of oxygen, running out of oxygen. And they'd never come across this before because, of course, everyone's got the oxygen full masks on and they're all worried about what's going to happen. And literally, they ordered another oxygen tank. Now, when I say another oxygen tank, I don't mean a tanker on four wheels delivering it. They've got this massive light tank. You must have seen them before in places. Massive tanks, right? Uh, and it says BOC on the side. And it literally keeps emptying or nearly getting empty. And he said, you see that tank over there? This is the bloke who's in charge of the hospital. And like, yeah. He said, that would normally last us a month. It's now lasting about two to three days. That's how much oxygen that you're using. And the tankers, because they, they have to buy the oxygen in, I suppose, the tankers that deliver the oxygen, right, they would normally have one a week. They're now having two a day. Two a day, tankers. And what they were worried about is all the pipes freezing up because of the extra flow that's coming through all these little pipes. And they're like, well, what, what happens if it goes off? Or, or what 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 will happen if this carries on if we carry on consuming it at this rate and they're like well we don't know we we don't know it could suddenly just stop because all these pipes freeze up when you watch the the oxygen sorry when you watch the watch the oxygen coming out of the tank through these pipes into <clears throat> the hospital tank um it it's like all frosted around it you see it's, it's just you, you can't touch it it's freezing cold your finger will fall off awful but very, very good programme. That uh, Do give it a watch. That's on the BBC iPlayer and it's called Hospital. Very, very informative. I didn't see my doctor on there. I didn't expect to see my doctor on there. Uh, who rang me yesterday. My specialist doctor, I see him twice a year. I'm supposed to go in June. Uh, but I'm down to about six weeks worth of pills. So I thought I'd ring him last week, you know. And uh, 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 they said, well, you've got an appointment in June. Uh, I'll get the doctor to ring you. So we made an appointment for uh, yesterday at 12.20. Now, my doctor is fantastic. He's, he's funny, he's hilarious, and he's very, very efficient. Usually, I go there, and uh, you're in and out, because I get to appointments very early. You're in and out before the appointment even starts. <laughs> But my doctor, he doesn't really have much idea of appointment times. That's not a complaint, not at all. Certainly not a complaint. He's got no idea of appointment times. And uh, I was expecting a call yesterday at 12.20. Well, as the, as the music was playing yesterday at the end of our very short show, he rang. <laughs> he, he rang and uh, so that was good I mean it was a line of a kind of a blessing in disguise uh, that the show finished earlier that was a, that would have been about about a quarter past ten I suppose he rang and said alright Chris um, hello it's uh, your doctor here <clears throat> and how are you feeling at the moment I said okay he said any problems at all I said no n none at all okay he said we're cancelling the June um, appointment and we're pushing that back four months to September um, in the hope, I suppose, that they may have some sort of control over this whole thing going on at the moment. Uh, he said, we're courier, f we will courier, 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 courier to you four months worth of tablets and um, that are tied you over for that time. So that's good, isn't it? That's good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, what's that? You've gone. Oh, that's Gary from yesterday. So that's the pills. That's the doctor spoken to. Haven't managed to see the uh, latest episode yet of Killing Eve which uh, I love very much. New episodes every Monday, both on the telly and on the iPlayer. Um, it's funny with Harry's birthday, Harry's seven today, as I mentioned, all those great nieces and nephews, except one, which is George. George has his birthday in September. All the others come in April and May. All of them. All of them. That's Evie, Olivia, Harry. So they was all gone. Uh, Emily is my niece's little girl. Uh, there's James. He's my that's that's the youngest out of all of them at the moment. Uh, that he's uh, he's I think he's three now, uh, which is a shame really, because we had a, a Euro Disney thing planned, 
um, of course, it got cancelled and I've got the money back now. That was that was very good. Magic Breaks, they called. They were very, very good. Very, very good. They'd sent without you even doing anything. They sent everyone an email saying, we're sorry you've had to have your holiday cancelled. Please bear with us. We will now work through the list. And about a week or so later, I got a phone call. Fantastic. A really good service. Magic breaks. You cannot fault them. Really. Cannot fault them. But because he was under three, it was at a certain price. Now is now is the full child price. Going to cost me even more money, dear. We're poor. We're poor. Please send Red Cross parcels immediately. I need one of those poverty parcels that the government is sending out. That's what I need. Poverty parcels, dear. Poverty parcels. Never mind, though. But all those birthdays come together. But uh, they're, they're over now, I think, until September. So I can't, can't forget anything. Can't forget anything. Uh, anyone who watches the show as a recording, you may notice that it's taken a little while to go up. I don't know why YouTube processing has been, become a little bit slow. That's nothing to do with me. I finish the show, they've got it, and it goes through some sort of processing procedure before it goes back up. So it may take a while for it to reappear there. All right. Uh, on the show today, we've got our Super Chatters raffle. Someone today is going to win one of those for our Super Chatters raffle. Okay, that's going to be one on the show today. The tickets are standing by there. And after that, I will reveal to you... Ba, 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 ba. Do we need a drum roll? No, we don't need a drum roll. I will reveal to you what the prize will be for next week's Super Chatters raffle. All right? So that's all coming up. If you're wondering what the Super Chatters raffle is, I'll tell you about it a little bit uh, later on. If you want to, entirely up to you, you could still get... Uh, so if anyone's sending a Super Chat ticket today, it will go in today's raffle. All right? So you can still do that today if you want to. For every pound Super Chat, I will give you a free raffle ticket. All right? But if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Whatever. Uh, has anyone made a mask yet? Has anyone uh, made a mask yet, I wonder? Anyone made a mask yet? I, I ask you this because um, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of YouTube videos and things like that going around at the moment of people looking for masks or, or, or making masks. People are making masks. And uh, what they're doing, it appears, is cutting off the bottom of T-shirts. <laughs> and I think it's a bit of a waste of a T-shirt. I've got a much better idea now. Foolishly, very, very foolishly, I've forgotten to bring the set item in here, boys and girls. So if you excuse me for a moment. I'll oh, just go and get those. All right. Sorry? Right, are you ready? Okay, so lots of people are using T-shirts. So, I mean, here is an excellent T-shirt. This was a gift as given to me uh, by my friend, Mr. Ray Reynolds. Okay. I'll be coming to your messages a little bit later on in the show today, my darlings. Uh, I've got lots to do. Here we go. Right, so there is... Uh, a T-shirt, an old BBC One colour T-shirt. Look at that! Look at that! Come on! We need the globe back on the telly. Look at that. You want one of these, don't you? Yep, not available. Not perhaps I should start giving away old items of my own clothing. I don't know. Something like that. Would that would that go down well or not? Anyway, so here that. And what they're doing, it seems, is is cutting. They're cutting, I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I haven't watched a whole video myself, but they're cutting, say, the bottom of it like that, and then putting it around their mouths like that, and um, that, uh, no, no, no letters posting, please. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> You've got to be very sharp to have got that one. <laughs> uh, they, they, they like putting it around this somehow, or I suppose... Or like that. I don't know where they're doing it. Something like that. Okay. So they're doing masks like that. And um, 
they do say that masks aren't particularly good, but I really do believe, you know, something is better than nothing. How these people can get on a tube train or a bus with nothing at all in front of their faces is beyond me. It really is. However, I've discovered I've got something much easier uh, to use than that. And that is a pair of my pants. There you go. Look, my pants. OK, and you can just you can just like put them straight over like that. Look, there you go. I haven't had to cut anything. You haven't had to ruin any clothes or anything like that. Marvellous, dear. Look how easy this is. And look, it's got elastic here. So that's kind of around your nose. I suppose you could put a clothes peg on there as well, couldn't you? Like a clothes peg or something like that. Uh, and, and maybe maybe bring it right up like that. Can you see me going into Audi like this later on, boys and girls? I think I can see myself going into Audi later on. And for extra effect, you know, your wardrobe is your friend. Absolutely is your wardrobe your friend, right? For added effect, right? Before you put this up, let's just... Uh, you see how easily this comes down? Now, look at this. Look, 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 look. Look how easily that comes down. I've got to undo anything. There's no ties or anything like elastic bits, you know, pulling at your ears. Oh, 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 like that all the time while you're looking at the eggs in aisle five. For added effects, you could use a couple of socks. But obviously, one sock is not sufficient, right? Because you can't, you can't do it up. Look. Can't do it up. Can't do it. Right? So you'd have to tie two together, wouldn't you? Tie two socks together, <coughs> somehow, like this. Looks like... We, oh, we might need a bit of sellotape for this. There we go. We're doing this live, boys and girls. There's no Blue Peter here, dear. No Blue Peter here. This is live as it happens, exclusively on this channel. So we get a bit of a, perhaps, a set of... Gaffer tape might be ready. Excuse me. Get some gaffer tape. Now, notice... <coughs> I think I must have nicked this from somewhere, but <laughs> never mind. Uh, notice how I have selected a colour of gaffer tape that is the same colour as the uh, as the, as the socks. Yeah, we must be colour coordinated, darling. You know what people are liking on on this show, for example. Ow, oh, your jacket doesn't match your shirt. Sad character. How can you even notice that? Look for the content, dear. The content, not the thing that's crooked at the back. Here we go, right? So we'll just open this here. Oh, this is so much fun today. So much fun, dear. Right, so we got that. Where's the other sock gone? Oh, there it is. So we'll do that like that. And a uh, little bit of tape there, darling. Try, 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 try. I hope old Greta Thundenberg isn't watching it. Oh, what you're doing is very horrible to the environment. <laughs> Lily Allen would be there crying her eyes out and all, wouldn't they? Oh, the left are out in force today, darling. They're out in force. Now, I would recommend, first of all, put a piece of sellotape on that one. Uh, you know, I mean, you don't have to use colour-coordinated tape if you don't want to. But, you know, I think it's better. I think it's better. And then that one like that. And you put the two together. Look at that. How fabulous is that, darling? Right? OK. So we would do like that, like that. Here I am, darling. You're wasting your time watching those government announcements. They don't know what the hell they're doing, dear. I will advise you in future. Watch this program every morning. And I will advise you how to overcome this evil virus as sent from the devil himself. There you go. So look, look, look. Look at that. Look, look. OK. And then you place this around your face like that. And you just tie it up like that. OK. So you don't want it too tight because you are not breathe then. Okay, and that will go over here, like that. Right? That goes over there like that. You might want a little bit of a longer sock, because that's not quite reached in the bottom of my mouth. Can you see it? That's not quite reached in the bottom of my mouth there. Okay? So it may want a longer sock, or perhaps an old one that's become a bit stretched. Then you can pull it right over, okay? And then from there, you put the pants over like that, and you've now got triple protect. Can I sit? Hello. Where are you? You now have triple protection against the evil viruses that are floating around in the air as we speak, boys and girls.
There we are. I think glasses as well, because it can get in your eyes. I must say, my glasses do appear to be steaming up now. Your glasses are probably stealing up, steam up every time you look at me. To be, I, they have steamed up. Can you see? Look, I don't know why, but my glasses have steamed up. But there you go. There you are, wasting a hundred pounds on a blooming overpriced mask on eBay. It's outrageous. You can do it all yourself with your very own underwear. Some of you, I would suggest, uh, might want to buy new underwear before you, because most of quite a good, a few, a few dirty people on here, I'm afraid, which I have noticed over time. There are a few people on here who are quite dirty. Has to be said, my loves. All right, so that's the mask. Uh, try and make one yourself. And I'm wondering, has anyone tried to make a mask yet? Do let me know. As you know, we were doing our very own United Kingdom talk masks, but but you didn't jump fast enough. Once they're gone, they're gone. Like the stuff in Audi. Thanks very much. Like the stuff in Audi. Righty-ho, let's have a little look there. So we've gone and done, um, done all my accountant stuff. That's all gone off to the accountant. I'm very uh, accountant, I'm pleased to say. Uh, you get this letter from him with all sort of questions. Oh, uh, this is missing. This is missing. I did all that yesterday. I was very, very busy yesterday indeed. Very, very busy yesterday. Uh, my niece noticed something on, on our backdrop here. And I, I'd never noticed it before. She says, you've got fairies on your backdrop. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, well, there's mushrooms, there's trees, there's little white clouds. Where are the fairies? She says, at the top. And I'm like, what, what do you mean at the top? She said, it's the little black, it, it's the little white dots. Apparently, they're fairies. Did you know that? There are fairies at the bottom of my garden. They're fairies. See, I've got fairies in this room. I like fairies. We like fairies, don't we? Do you like fairies? They always appear. I did have a fairy story here. Here we are. Uh, fairy. Here we are. Fairy. What is a fairy? A fairy is a type of mythical being or legendary creature. Legend. <laughs> Legendary creature. Hello, me, legendary creature. They are legendary creatures in European folklore, often a form of spirit. Spirit of God in the clear running water, flowing to greatness, the trees on the hill. That one. Wonderful. They are often described as metaphysical, supernatural or preternatural. Myths and stories about fairies do not have a single origin, but are rather a collection of folk beliefs from disparate sources. So that is what a fairy is, just in case you were wondering, boys and girls, just in case you were wondering what a fairy is. And my niece pointed out, I have fairies in this room. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't know there was any fairies in this room. Look, they're all up there, lovely. Surrounded by fairies, keeping an eye on us, keeping an eye on us. Uh, Jason Hughes says we're watching the fairy of Berkshire now. Yes, you certainly have. <laughs> Mick Davenport will be going commando to protect his face. Excellent, Mick. Your face is everything, my darling. Your face is everything. Good morning to John Aitken. Uh, it looks like the elephant man was on. Did I really? Or a bandit, says Rachel. <laughs> Oh, Greta Thunderberg. Was she in Emmerdale Farm? Daniel wants to know. Ba 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 ba. Oh no, we got to have the, have got to do that properly. Just a moment. Just a moment. Got to do that. I've got the ITV thing for that. One moment, please. One moment, please. We're gonna do. We're gonna do a TV theme now, boys. It goes TV theme now. Are you ready? Just a moment. Just actually, let's do a TikTok video while we're all sitting here. Shall we do a TikTok video? Shall we do a TikTok video? Right. One moment. One moment. You don't mind, you bear in, bear in mind while I do my other hobby as well. One second now, where's TikTok? Let's bring up TikTok. TikTok. <clears throat> TikTok, where is it now? TikTok Plus. Hey, yeah, Rachel. Um, I'm doing a live TikTok this morning. You ready? Here we go. Where is it now? There it is. Right, listen. Let's give this a, a quick countdown on there. We'll have a three second countdown. Uh, bear with me a moment, please, boys and girls. There we are. Uh, there it is, Yorkshire Ident. Stand in my here we go. Three seconds. Three, two, one. And it's time for another TV theme. This week, what is this theme for? 
ba 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 oh I've, I've just a minute I've done that wrong I've, I've only done the fifth I've, you know what I mean Rachel I've only done the 15 second one darling I, ha I have it set incorrectly let's try that again uh, 15 and uh, 60 seconds it probably won't be 60 seconds just to let you know I think it's going to be too far away if, oh I've just dropped that phone now everything's falling apart here dear uh, one moment please that I do like that I think yes that I do like that ready or shall, or shall I put it over there? Let me see. I think, where's it going to be best? Over there. Oh, no, with a mirror ball. I'll put it in its original place. Here we go. Ready? Ready? I'll move over a bit there. That's it. Here we go. <clears throat> we'll a bit more volume on the eye then. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, Yorkshire Television. Here we go. Right. Give it a three-second countdown. <coughs> I do all that before I come and talk to you in the morning. I tell you. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Time for another TV theme today, boys and girls. What is the theme for this? Ba 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 That's enough of that, dear. Right, next. And uh, what should we? What should we? What should we hashtag this? Let's hashtag it over fifties. That's always got quite a few million people watching that one. Over fifty club. And uh, what else shall we do? Comedy, comedy, UK humour, UK humour, or UK comedy. Let's try UK comedy. Oh, I can't. I can't even see this. Oh, yeah, UK comedy, yes, okay, oh yes, yes, we'll have that one, and um, FYP, always put FYP on there, I'm not quite sure what that means, FYP, to be honest, uh, Rachel, but I noticed a lot of people have got it on there, so so best to do that, and um, uh, what's that, UK humour, I said, didn't I, humour, UK humour, and ITV, 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 uh, ITV, yeah, and let's try Emmerdale. Oh no, if I put Emmerdale, they know what it is, won't it? Nice. There we go. And stand by and done and post, post, post. Yeah, we're done, done. Shut up. There we go. One minute. Shut up. Shut up. Don't play music on here. Don't play music, 31%. That's going up now, Rachel, for people's entertainment a little bit later on. Thank you very much, darling. Um, we've got picture freezing. Don't start. Oh, don't cut me off again. Virgin Media, do not cut me off again. I'm in full flow this morning. Daniel says you'll never get me into Euro Disney. I couldn't stand the thought of having someone in a Mickey Mouse costume telling me to have a nice day. Oh, what a miserable git you are. Well, I hope you have a rotten day then. Have a rotten day, Daniel. You have a rotten day today on behalf of all of us. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't start mucking around with me, Virgin Media. Come on, it's been all right up to now. Leave me alone. Stop playing with those wires this morning. I hope we don't get cut off again. Um, Claire had a full refund from park holidays for the caravan holiday I should have had with my mum the first week of the lockdown. Really pleased with the service. Yes, so... Uh, and I think, to be honest, listening to some of the stories, Claire, uh, we appear to be in the lucky ones, really. We do appear to have been the lucky ones. Um, there's a lot of stories going around of people being palmed off with vouchers. You know, <laughs> you won't be able to go on holiday this year. My mate is convinced he's going to go to Las... Uh, not Las Vegas. What's the other? Los. Los Angeles with his other half. I said, no, you ain't. Oh, there'll be some flights going. Are you a mug? And he has terrible, much worse lungs than me. I'll tell you what I'm getting at the moment. I'm getting anxiety. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's anxiety, right? And I'll tell you why. I'm having trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm on this a lot at the moment, an awful lot, okay? 
And I'm walking around and I can't, do you know, I'm having trouble breathing again. Right? Since I started this show today, has it happened once? No. Because my mind is now working. Yeah? I'm, I am, I know I'm suffering from some sort of anxiety at the moment. I believe the, um, uh, the answer to that is breathing in and out of a plastic, of a paper, brown paper, well, I don't know why a brown one, but a paper bag. Is that right? Maybe we've got a nurse or something there, so perhaps I could try that. Adam's getting excited. He's going to crush a goat. Yeah, we've got the uh, Super Chatter raffle coming up for you uh, a little bit later on there. All right, uh, let's have a look at our text as well, and we'll carry on. Oh, uh, the opening show, triple screen, the date is completely wrong. So what? So what, Peter? We don't worry about stupid things like that. God's sake, what's the triple camera one? What is it? Wednesday the 12th of May. Oh, two days out. And you're worried about that? Christ almighty. Get alive, Peter, will you? What's wrong with people? Moaning about tiny little things. There you go. You're happy now. All these people on here with ODH or whatever it's called. I don't know. Anything else wrong? Extra button undone here. I have another one, mate. Go on. There you go. Whoa, look at that, eh? That turning you on, is it? Dear me. Moan, moan, moan all the time. Uh, what else is people saying today? Let's uh, keep, keep, uh, yeah, there we are. Um, John, does FYP mean for your pleasure? I have no idea what it means, uh, to be honest, John. No idea. This show's for the over 50s. So I'm, are you, you're not 60, are you? Are you 60, Daniel? I always assumed you were sort of one of the younger lads, maybe 30, 30-ish. I assumed you were sort of in your 30s for some reason. Don't know why. Uh, don't, don't really know why. Don't really know why. Okay, good. Um, I did go up on Tuesday's show. Remember I said you said the satellites were going to appear again? Uh, <laughs> all right, Shania. The satellites were going to appear again. Well, I did go on the trip from my house. As I went, left the house, because the satellites were due to fly over at 11 o'clock, right? So I got, I left the house, 10.30, and I looked up in the sky, completely clouded over. I thought, oh... Anyway, I thought I walked down the road, just up right, and I'll have a look there because you can see quite a lot of the sky from there. So I did that, walked past my house, and all the we've all got ring doorbell cameras here, you know. Yeah, if I how can I put this? If I had a late night visitor, they'd all know. You'd you'd start getting messages from Pearl at the end. <laughs> oh, see, you had a visitor last. <laughs> There's, no, there's been no visitors at night here for four or five years now, let me tell you that now. But if I did have, you know, perhaps the lad from Argos. I don't know. Anyway, so I've gone down there and I thought, oh, no, waste of time. So I came back in and I had my binoculars around around here and everything. I was all ready to go out. It was cold Tuesday night. I had a hat on and all that business. Um, so I, uh, uh, I, I... I, I I put the stuff down. I, thought, I just checked the weather. So I went to my Alexa. Oh, sorry. Alexa, what's the weather? She can hear me from here, you know. She starts rabbiting away in the other room. I'll just wait for your personal weather forecasts to finish now. Alexa, stop. There you go. All right. So I asked my Amazon device what the weather was like, and she said, Cla partly cloudy skies. I thought, hmm, maybe there's a chance they will clear when I get up there, because you can suddenly get a big gap in all the clouds, can't you? Yeah. So I thought, go on, give it a go. So I left the house, went up there. I went up this hill. I was incredibly breathless going up this hill for some reason. I don't know why, but I got to the top of it and recovered very quickly. Um... And you see, I'm thinking about this virus all the time. I think that's really playing on my mind subconsciously and it's given me some sort of anxiety thing. I'm perfectly, perfectly all right here. And I'll be, if, you know, if, if there was something wrong, it would happen while I'm sitting here chatting away all the time, wouldn't it? Oh, look, look, now, look, look what it's texted now. Now, oh, the date says Wednesday. I'll tell you what. Go and find something else, Peter. Go and find something else wrong with your life rather than mine all the time. Moan, moan, moan all the time. Um, 
I'm just, no mention of any of the content in the show. Just what's what's wrong, isn't it, eh? You can only... Ma oh, I shall have to block you on here. Can't stand it any longer. Blocked. <clears throat> so, I went up, I uh, got to the top there, and uh, I looked up at the sky, and it was about a quarter to 11 now, quarter to 11, 10 to 11, completely clouded over. You couldn't see any cloud in the sky, whatsoever, uh, any stars in the sky whatsoever. Uh, and I was on my own this time. Last time I went up there, there was a few people up there, only about four, uh, but I was completely on my own. It was later this time, of course, 11 o'clock at night. So um, I waited and I waited till about five past 11. The satellites were apparently due to fly over at 11 o'clock, uh, but nothing. And the sky didn't clear at all. There was one tiny little bit of black uh, that you could just see through the through the grey and about two stars. And that was with my binoculars, but uh, nothing, unfortunately. So uh, a failure there. Wasn't able to see the... Um, uh, the stars at all. But never mind. There's another opportunity tonight, apparently. Uh, if you want to go and have a look at the sky tonight, I don't know what it's going to be like tonight, but 10.30 is the time they are flying over the uh, over the UK tonight if you want to watch them there. All right, my love. So 10.30 tonight. Uh, I'll probably give it another go tonight. I think I'll probably walk up there again tonight. I, I want to get a decent torch. I haven't got a decent torch here. I've got this, this thing that sits near the electricity cupboard. You know, I must get those done as well. I've got any really old electricity uh, things. What are they called? You know, those things that click down if the electric goes wrong. One of those. I mean, th these are huge, these things. I mean, they're not quite the pull-out switch, those things that like, we used to have. They're big, thick switches. Um, one of the houses that I let, let out, I recently did their uh, electric board what is it called? Circuit breaker board, that thing. I recently did theirs. So they had the same as mine. And it's all been replaced by these little plastic things. It click, click, click. It's so very small. Very small. Bloke, was there about five hours or something like that? Yeah, it was ages doing it. Because they have to take all the little wires off, don't they? And put them all back in the right place. What if they get the wrong ones? Could it be electrocuted? Wouldn't be anyone to do the show then, would there? Shocking, really. Shocking. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, I must get that done at some point. Um, and in there is a, is an old torch, and it's not that bright, to be honest, but it, I kind of have it on the floor as I'm walking up and back down uh, the forest um, to go and see the satellites. I've been up there three times now. I still haven't seen them. Never mind, maybe tonight, eh? Maybe tonight we might have a clear sky tonight, and fingers crossed. Um, one of the things I tried last night to get working was Facebook video calls. This wasn't, we were not going to do a, a phone-in show for a while. However, um, there's been a couple of times where I wanted to sort of do perhaps a, 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 an interview, not an interview, a chat with someone. Uh, so I was trying to get that to work on the broadcast computer yesterday. No luck there, unfortunately, because what's happening is that I'm doing a show with this camera or, or any of the other cameras uh, that are in here. And then Facebook wants to access those cameras to make the video call. But it can't because the software I'm using to broadcast to you is already using those cameras. You see? So that's not a non-starter, unfortunately. So we can't get that working at the moment. Uh, and what else did I do yesterday? I, I cleaned the... Uh, I did a bit of cleaning yesterday. My kitchen, I don't think, has ever been so clean, to be honest. It's really clean at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I keep cleaning it. I've got this bleach flash spray, flash bleach spray. And I decided yesterday to do on top of the one, one of the cupboards. Oh, all clear. I don't dare tell you, my love. It was filthy, the top of this cupboard. Absolutely filthy, dear. Awful. Awful. Shocking. I actually put it this way. I had to hoover the top of the cupboard before I sprayed it. There was so much dust up there. Disgusting. I'm a disgusting, filthy person, as you know. Disgusting, filthy pig. That's what I am. 
That's what I did last night. Didn't watch any telly, really. Uh, as I say, I want to watch uh, Killing Eve at some point there. Uh, Mandy, uh, mixed driving, but he's not happy that he should that that name should be up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I need a head torch. Ah, yes, Fran. Uh, my neighbours have got those. My neighbours have got those. Head torches. They're quite good. Mind you, you, you've got to have your head down. Mind you, you've got your head down on the ground when you're holding the torch, haven't you? I mean, it's, it's, it's all right for what it is. And I've got the torch on the iPhone as well. So um, that helps as well. Um, uh, trip switches. That's what they are, aren't they, Colin? Thank you. Morning, Kevin. Um, bum bum bum. Let's just have some of these. Uh, 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 uh. You haven't been blocked, Peter. Um, get get wrecked. What is wrecked? Get wrecked. What is that? Get wrecked. I don't know what that is. Hello, Michael Pullman, Jason Hughes, uh, Shania there. John Parrish, good morning to you. Uh, John is in the house there. Uh, no, we haven't done videos yet. We haven't done those yet. Uh, okay, yes, I've got some stuff to show you today, boys and girls. Uh, I've got... What have we got today? We've got one... Uh, we've actually got quite a lot. There's a few lots of photographs. And there's a video from Sean Pye. Okay, so we've got those to show you today. We will need... 25 likes today to show you those items. Okay, so get liking, boys and girls. Get liking. Get likey, 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 get likey, likey, and I will show you those items, okay? <laughs> all righty. Chris, uh, Peter just texted again. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you all his text. They just go on and they keep coming, you see? Peter, I'm not funny. Well, why are you watching it then? Go and watch something else then. You won't be missed. Go. Go. You think I'm bothered? Bothered, bothered, me, bothered. No, not bothered. Me, bothered. No, but not bothered. Thank you. Um, Claire is the same. My house has never been so clean. Remove the dust of ages. Spiders from my studio. Still loads to do. Oh, it's true, isn't it? It is true. <laughs> Thank you, John. Consumer unit with MCBs. Miniature circuit breakers. That's what my, uh, one of the places I've got. And uh, I found a local electrician. Very reasonable. Very, no complaints there at all. Very, very reasonable. Got the letter setting out exactly what he was charging for. Very professional people, too. We like professional people. We like professional people, which which makes me wonder why on earth you're watching this programme. It really does. Should we do the Super Chatter Raffle now? Let's do the Super Chatter Raffle, and then we'll do a few stories. Just one more story. Just... <laughs> Getting wrecked means plastered. Oh, not me, Kevin. No, I, I don't get drunk. I hate it. I can't bear it. I'll have one glass of champagne and that'll be me merry. That's enough. Two glasses, bit of a problem. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I don't drink only at afternoon teas, maybe one on a plane or something like that, you know. Oh, it doesn't worry me too much drinking. Doesn't do anything from... I can't bear. Oh, and I used to get drunk. Don't get me wrong, in my 20s, early 20s. Drunk to the point of having to crawl home. And, oh, oh. and you know that spinning. I can't bear it. I hate it. I don't see the attraction um, of um, uh, the attraction of drink, to be honest. I don't see the attraction to, of drink, really. I don't. Anyway, let's do this super chat raffle. Now, someone's going to win today one of these, one of these hats, only available to win, okay, uh, as a bingo prize or a super chat raffle. Morning, Maureen. Maureen just joining us there. There we go. That's it there, right? So, here is... I love this jar. I love this jar. I love this jar. I love this jar. Okay, there we are. Can you see that there? There's all your Super Chat raffle tickets. Okay, nothing in my hands, nothing above my sleeves. Oh, it's a fix. And you notice that? You know, people that think it's a sick fix because they didn't win. Oh, didums. Didums. <laughs> Ready? Ready then? Let's let's start mixing the tickets. Let's mix the tickets. Who's gonna win this today? Who's gonna win? Oh, let me lift that a bit more for you. Would it be better on this other camera here? One moment, please. Oh, the, oh no, that camera's been taken away now, hasn't it? 
That camera with the bad quality is gone now. I got rid of it in the end. Number three, number four. Where's number two then? Where's number four? What's that one? Is it that one? No, is it that one? Oh, that's the one there. Is that? No, it's even worse, isn't it? What about this one? Where's the wide one? There we go. That's Ah, here we go. That's better, isn't it? All right. So you can see me mixing the tickets now. Let's mix those tickets up. Mixing, mixing, mixing. Are you excited? Who's going to win the hack today? Here we are. Right, notice I do not look at the tickets. I just look straight at you, my darlings. Okay. Mixing. Have we mixed enough yet? I'm going to leave it to Jason Hughes to tell me when to pull out the raffle, when to start the drum roll and pull out the raffle ticket. Come on, Jason. So we're waiting for you to give me instruct. Have you always wanted to give me instruction, Jason Hughes? I think you have. Come on. Come on, Jason. When are we going on? Ready? Come on. You tell me to pick it, to roll the drums and I shall pick out a ticket. Still mixing at the moment, Jason. Jason, he says he's done all his electrics in the shed himself. Uh, consumer unit, double sockets. Wow. Wow. Very good. You, don't you have to have an uh, electric license or something like that? Is it something like that? I don't know, really. Come on, Jason. Are we, how long are we going to wait? My arm is aching now, dear. My right arm is aching. Come on, for Christ's sake. Morning, LaBelle. Shania's wishing everyone good luck. This is not me. It's not me holding it up. It's Jason. He's not. It's not paying attention. Not yet. Oh shit, Jesus! I'm not waiting for you any longer. Uh, <laughs> here comes the drum roll. Right, hang on. I've got two there. Is that one? Right, I have one ticket in my hand there. I have one ticket in my hand. Ticket number 111. Which is... Da, 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 ticket number 111. Ba, 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 which is Mr. Kevin... Ja How many more times are you going to say hi, James? It is ticket for... Kevin James. Ba, 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 Is Kevin with us today? Which one is Kevin? Not quite sure who Kevin is. Where are you, Kevin? There you go. Kevin James, ticket number 111. Okay, we'll see if he's here today. Good morning, Mike Bolden. Hello to you. Right, I'll put that over here. Uh, we still haven't had the fridge magnet claimed, incidentally. That's that one, 681. You don't get to know the name of that one. You have to claim that. All right, so we're still waiting for the fridge magnet to be claimed. But that's for, excuse me, the hat today. Kevin James, 111. All right, well done, Kevin. Now, all those tickets go in here. Ready for, da, 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 da. that's for the super draw, which we do once a month. OK, mm -hmm. so they all go in there with all the other tickets. Look at all these for the super draw. That's for a fridge magnet once a month. We do an extra one there. There's Kevin. Kevin James. Hang on a minute. Kevin James. New name for you, Chris. Chainsaw masochist, especially since he purchased a hedge trimmer. Kevin, look, look. You won your ticket there, Kevin. There you are, my love. One, one, one. Well done, Kevin. Congratulations to Kevin. Come on, gang. Come on. Come on. Right, you need to email me your full postal address and I shall get one of these exclusive hats on its way to you. Kevin, Philippines, will give you Geo's address in London later by email. Oh, excellent. Oh, thanks very much, Kevin. That that does help a lot, you be able to do that. Who's Geo? Who is Geo? Geo. Geo. That's a great name, isn't it? Geo. Is he the bloke that's got, he's got a restaurant, hasn't he? Geo De Campo. Is it Geo De Campo? Something like that. Gio Campari. I can't remember his name. You know, the very famous chef. He's got a restaurant. I know he's got a restaurant in Camden because I went there a couple of times uh, with my dear friend, uh, non-Irish Mary from Ireland. Yeah. Uh, before she she died, um, 
We met up twice there, actually. Lovely restaurant. Gio Campo, Gio De Campos. Someone tell me his proper name. We are Gio De Campos restaurant in um, Camden Town. Highly recommended. Lovely pasta and pizzas and all that in there. I like Italian restaurants. Lots of people wishing you uh, well done there. So there you go. <clears throat> all right. Excellent. John Paris wants another wants another pull out there, don't you? Know? Kevin's in the Philippines. Yeah, thank you. We saw that there, so that's excellent there. Um, good. Is it G Gino? De Ca Is it Gino Campo or Gino De Campo or De Campo or something like that? See, I know a drag queen called fin and her name finishes De Campo. She was on that talent thing where there's a hundred people sitting there. The one in the middle with the bright coloured airs and all that. Nice girl. Nice girl. Cast singer. Silly Chris, calf singer. Oh, yeah, Geo. I know Geo. Yes. Yes, I know Geo. Dropped a gorgeous Geo. Oh, my God. Yes, I know him. All right. Okie doke. So just uh, email me. Excuse me. Uh, just email me your um, information there and I'll be pleased to do that. It's got to be anxiety, this chest thing I've got, because it's not here now, is it? Not that I'm doing something, you know. When I forget, same as when I was cutting the edge, I didn't need this once. Not once. You're sitting at home on your own. You think, is my breathing all right? And then it starts. It's got to be anxiety, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway. Um, thank you, Kevin. Gino de, Ca G Gino de Campo. Is that the one, Fran? Yeah, he comes across as a nice bloke, doesn't he? He's Honestly, his restaurant, and it's not expensive. His restaurant in Camden is lovely. I had uh, pizza. I think we had pizza twice there. And uh, Mary had something else, yeah. And my mate came along as well. God, miss her. All together now. Thank you, Andy, Andy. All together now was the programme. How are we doing on the likes? We've got 15 likes. We need, what did I say, 25 likes to show you the wonderful pictures and uh, bits and pieces that have been sent in by our uh, delightful viewers uh, over the last few days. So please uh, hit that like button there. Do the little thumbs up. And uh, I'll be very pleased to show you the pictures. Uh, meantime, what's the prize for next week's Super Chatter Raffle. One of these, my darlings. Okay. Every time you send a pound, I will give you, free of charge, one of these as a super chat. Two pounds gets you two. If you do super chat stickers, one i I'll give you two of those. But that is the prize for next week's Super Chatter Raffle. All right, just to let you know. Perhaps I'll position that up there. Oh, it might fall down, Martin. It <laughs> probably it'll fall apart on its own, let alone be stuck up there and drop down. So that's the prize for next week's Super Chat as well. Okay, I'll put that behind there. Right, um, <clears throat> let's do a couple of stories then. Uh, get some cucumbers on your eyes. I keep meaning to do that, don't I? <laughs> I'm sure I should do that at some point. Uh, bored British people are being urged to strip in your gardens on Saturday, boys and girls. Oh, yes, this was in the sun. Uh, naturists are... Uh, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't walk around naked. Could you walk around naked? Not even in some of those strange clubs that people go to. Uh, naturists are urging bored British people uh, to strip naked in the garden on Saturday in a national celebration of nudity. Well, there's nothing to celebrate here at the moment. I'm telling you that now, mate. <laughs> British naturism wants people to join in with their Great British takeoff by sunbathing in the nude. Please don't do this in your gardens, darlings. Please do not do this in your gardens. Peter Wright gets two super chat uh, 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 free tickets for uh, next week. Thank you, Peter. 117 and 118. Is anyone going to do this naked thing next uh, on Saturday? Huh? Shania, is that something you might be doing? Yeah, 117, 118 for Peter Wright. They go in there. As our Super Chatter Raffles, that's our Super Chatter Raffle next Thursday. Uh, they suggest making the National Nudie Day a sponsored strip-off, donating cash raised to the British Heart Foundation. British naturists claim lockdown has liberated people from the restraints of clothing. <laughs> Not me. As some people walk around that. My mate walks around the house naked. Is No. No. Am I being a prude? 
Have you ever seen and an, uh, I came across accidentally once uh, a, a, a nat- uh, nudist beach? Not pleasant to look at. There's no fit people there. It's people like me. Unfit people. Morbidly obese. Go on, Rachel, say something, darling. Rachel won't be doing it either. <laughs> what about children? I hope not, James. Well, I suppose so, yeah. Everyone. You know, there's nothing wrong with a, a family of family of people all being naked together. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There isn't. That's a normal thing. We, you, we weren't born with clothes on. A family out with no clothes on at all, no. But I suppose that's all right. I don't have a problem with that, really. You know, I have a problem with dirty old perverts. Look at them. That's, what, that's who's got the problem. Dirty old perverts. But a, a family out on their own, I don't have a problem with that. I remember, um, oh, some blooming loony lefty. Uh, oh, you didn't get the super chat noise, did you? Sorry. Got to do the super chat noise. That was for Peter and Andy. Andy gets three as well there, Andy. 119, 120 and 121 for you, Andy. It was Andy, wasn't it? Andy, Andy. So three for you as well. Um, there was a, a story about a year or so ago now. And... Some some lefty idiot had gone to the newspapers and complained of a picture, right, of David Beckham kissing his little girl on... Was it David Beckham? Kissing his little girl or someone like that on the lips. Or it might have been her, Victoria, kissing her son on the lips. Yeah, it's her child. What's the problem with that? Stupid people again. Stupid people. Absolutely stupid people. There you go. Three for you there, Andy, Andy. And Shania as well, as well. Today, Shania, she's desperate for that clock, aren't you, darling? They are. Super Chat stickers. 199 Super Chat sticker. That's worth two. Shania, 122. Two. And 123, okay? We have the normal raffle tickets for the Monday raffle coming up later as well. There you go, Shania. All right, sweetheart. Uh, there you go. All right. Put those in there like that. Um... Uh, but what what do you think, uh, boys? Is that a problem to you? Seeing a family, parents, children walking around naked in a, in a place that is set up for them. You know, obviously not walking around the street. <laughs> you certainly wouldn't want to go into into Audi and see those sort of people walking around fat, uh, uh, naked. <laughs> I'd be one of them. <laughs> it was his daughter, was it? So it was it was David Beckham and his daughter. I thought it was, yeah. There was a picture of him kissing his little girl on the lips. Wow, these papers were going into overdrive. Oh, that's wrong, that is. It's his blooming daughter. Mind your own business. Oh, people. Um... Jason, I'm especially careful using the grinder when I'm out in the garden centre naked. Could you imagine that hitting the tackle? Oh, God. Well, at least it'd be quick. Well, it depends how good you are, Jason. You're probably not a very straight cutter. <laughs> I ha- is it? Is it? I hate that noise, grinding noise. I hate it. I'm all right with it and wood. But when there's a bloke over there, I don't know what he's cutting up. It sounds like concrete. You know that noise when they start de- they start cutting holes in the road? Why do they do that? I'm convinced a lot of these potholes are caused by people who come along. They come along in their little vans, you know, whatever organisation it is. Council, gas, electric, phones, whoever it is. They come along in their little vans. You've seen them, haven't you? And they get out of their little vans. Eight o'clock in the morning. And around go. The cones come out, don't they? The cones come out for miles down the road. These cones come out. Okay. And um, the uh, uh, barriers as well. Barriers come out as well. And now it's half past eight. And they go inside the little barriers. The cars are queuing up down the road. And they get the tea out. There they are, sitting on their little stalls. There'd be a van in front and a van behind, protecting them from oncoming traffic. What's all that about? And then, 
after their tea break at, eight, at 10.30, after a couple of hours tea break, then out comes that thing that Jason's got, the grinder. The grinder comes out. Oh, it's the most annoying noise ever. I'm dying to know what it is. Got a, he's got a shed over it. I know exactly what house it comes from. I'm thinking of going over there one night with a, like a ghetto. I could get a cheap ghetto blaster. It'd be worth it. A cheap ghetto blaster from uh, eBay or something like that. You know, and put it outside his house with some sort of remote control on it. Go back to my house because I can see his house from here. I can see the house the noise is coming from and turn it on. What, what shall we have? I'll, I'll check out his age first and then uh, select a suitable piece of music that people of his age group won't like or are unlikely to like. I'm very lucky. I like all music. Classical, pop, reggae, heavy metal, rock and roll, soft metal, power ballads. I like most sorts of... I don't like drill music. Dreadful. Drill music. Drill music. Um, and... Uh, uh, so, so they're there. They start grinding the road. Zzz, 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 zzz. Right? And then they have another lunch break. And then that's it. Right? And then you go on your way. When you come back later on that same piece of road, oh, how miraculous. All the barriers have gone. All the cones have gone. The vans have gone. The men are not there. And you're driving along and bang, there's a pothole there. They are going around creating potholes. What's all that about? That's where these potholes are coming from. The council are purposely putting them in the road to stop you driving. I'm convinced of that, my loves. And why, and what's even worse than that, why does it take eight people to create a pothole in the ground? I can go out there quite happily with a hammer and do the same thing. And that's where potholes come from, boys and girls. <laughs> That's a good one for sending to the BBC, isn't it? Let's just take a note of the time. Of the... I haven't been here an hour, have I? <gasps> have I really sat here for an hour now? I can't believe that. A couple of messages coming up and then we'll do some more stories. Um, Peter. Uh, oh, we've got uh, a little bit not far up there. Um, ba -bum, should we go, how far back to should we go there? Um, ba -bum -bum. Uh, Jason got his badge yesterday. Extra. That took a long time, actually, Jason. That was posted um, Monday, actually, very early. But was it? Was that the early one I did Monday? When I when I went for a cycle on Monday early. Oh yeah. Anyway, I'm glad you got it there. Excellent news. Um, Fran, when you got stressed, you want to close your eyes and concentrate on your breathing for ten seconds. Thank you, Fran. I'll try that. I'm not necessarily stressed, um, Fran. It's just this. Like, I'm like. And it's like a, a, almost like a bit of a tightness here. Yeah, and I, I don't know what's, what it is. I wake up in the morning and it's not there at all. Strange, very strange. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's have a look. Uh, LaBelle, there's no reason to do it if no one can see it. <laughs> there's no reason not to do it, I think, if no one can see it. I might try being naked for the rest of the day, actually, LaBelle, with my own house. <clears throat> Should I pull pull the curtains? Well, no one walks past this house, so no one would see me anyway. I might see what that's like. <laughs> Rachel's got the angry faces there. Uh, can you put up the email address? There you go, Kevin. All right. Send us through your postal address there, and uh, I'll be happy to do that for you. Um, Peter likes the clock. Uh, may I ask what the Super Chat money is used for? Super Chats are tips. They are tips. When someone likes a show, likes the show, they send us a super chat. That's what that is. So that comes to me. That's what the super chat money is. It's not a charity or anything like that. People like it's like a bit like going to the hairdresser. Do you go to the hairdresser very much? Well, not at the moment, obviously. But when you go to the hairdresser, uh, you know, uh, say if my hair cut is uh, ten, I usually pay about ten pounds for mine. I probably give them fourteen or fifteen. I'm very good at tipping. Very good at tipping. Yeah. If I go to America for a holiday, virtually everyone that does something for you, you give them a little tip. And we're not talking like 10 quid, you know, a couple of dollars here. That's how they make. That's how America is set up. A lot of the um, hospitality industry, LaBelle will tell you, a lot of the hospitality industry is set up for tipping. That's how they get most of their money. They're not paid much money, you see. Even the drag queens over there. Now, the drag queens here, uh, they go on the stage, Peter, 
and they do a show and at the end of the show, they are paid a substantial wage. Subs I mean, I mean substantial. A few hundred quid for doing a show, right? In America, they get I think they get something. You'll correct me if I'm wrong here, LaBelle. Uh, but most of it comes from customers, so they will be performing, and people literally stand at the front of the stage and hand them money. That's how they make their wages up like that. All right? A similar, um, if you go to America for a holiday, you know, uh, you check in. You wouldn't really tip the check-in person, but someone comes along. Can I take your uh, bags for you, sir? They take your bags away for you, and then you just you just you put a couple of dollars in your hand, and uh, thanks very much, like that, and they take it out of your hand. Thank you, sir. And that's appreciated. Don't think you spend a lot of money on tips. No more than fifty quid. You wouldn't spend more than sort of fifty quid on tips, and you get it all get it all ready, like single dollar bills and things like that. But similarly here, you know, people are expected to tip here. I think in certain uh, certain places. But here, I think more often here, you would tip if you felt, felt that you'd had good service, you know? Um, when I go for afternoon teas, which are not cheap, if an afternoon tea is 80 quid, 70 quid, 60 quid, um, if it's, say, 80 quid, I'll probably give them, and it's always, nine times out of ten, it's fantastic service, I'll probably tip them 20 quid because that's the situation, you see? It's a bit posh. They've they've worked their they've worked basically up the expression they work their asses off to serve you and be pleasant and give you everything you want and I I don't go along this think well that's what they're paid for no they've given me good service there you go take that and you don't make a point of showing everyone oh look I'm handing someone twenty quid here no you don't do that that's just gross that's gross. He said, thanks very much. Um, can I have a word? Yeah, just want to thank you. And you have, you have it in your hand, you see. You have your 20 quid in your... I take great pleasure in doing that. I have to tell you, I take enormous pleasure in giving someone a decent tip after they've given me good service. I really do. There's so many tight people out there. Oh, I shouldn't give them any. I, I've, so I've got my 20 quid in my hand there. So listen, just want to thank you very much for what you've done. for And like that, and then they can feel it, you see. And especially if it's a cute lad, you get a chance to touch them. <laughs> ah, every cloud has a silver lining. You've lost 20 quid, but you've touched the cute lad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's what the super chat money for. It is a tip. It is a tip. And but I'm uh, as a way of saying thank you for that tip. I give you one of these. Every time you send us a pound super chat, you get what? Uh, no, one of those. One of those, and uh, I put a prize in every week. We've only just started doing that, and I think that's a nice thing to do. Uh, no one is uh, twisting anyone's arm to buy one. You also get the free ones at the end of the. Um, uh, sorry, not the free ones, but the normal ones at the end of the uh, show as well, as we normally do. So that's what it is there. Uh, people have occasionally asked me to do some sort of charity thing on there. Could you do this for a charity or this for a charity? That's That can be a bit iffy doing charities because you'll choose a charity and then other people say, oh, well, why didn't you do this one? Uh, and, and sometimes you might have a charity and it's all got to be checked out, all got to be checked out. You know, because someone could say, oh, I'm just raising money. I've seen people on Facebook, people, uh, dodgy people on Facebook saying, oh, I've got a crowdfunding scheme for homeless people somewhere. And I look at this person and I, and I think, I remember you, you used to do drugs in the pub. They're not raising money at all for that. So that's why we don't do any charity things on here. All right. Um, Sonia is desperate for the Oh, so uh, Sonia is desperate for the clock. Thank you, Sonia. Um, Jason's grinder is really quiet with my ear defenders on. <laughs> All right, Michael's got the hat. Excellent. Michael's got the hat. Excellent. I can't remember sending you out, Michael. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> There's so much stuff coming in and out of here now. I just can't cope. Um... Jason, the most annoying noise is a lawnmower at 7.30 in the morning. I don't use any noisy tools before 10.30 and not after 8.30. Well, that's all well and good, Jason. But what about people who are sitting in the blooming garden at 12 in the afternoon listening to your bleeding thing? <coughs> we have lawnmowers come round here, actually, about 8 o'clock in the morning from the council. That's OK. It doesn't bother me at all. I think... Um, 
I think it's 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 down to you what noises you do and don't like. Now I saw uh, it was a TikTok video actually last night, and it says uh, UK people will know how annoying this is, and it was what was it a boy or a girl or a bloke or I can't remember what it was now. Anyway, it was someone laying in bed like that on the pillow. You see him like that, and in the background you can hear a wood pigeon. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And this person's got up out of bed and gone, oh, like that, like that, and laid back down in the bed because he doesn't like that. So he or she doesn't like that sound. Now I love that sound. Ooh, ooh. In fact, if it's a decent enough night, I'll have my window open, right? And I it sometimes wakes me up like four, five in the morning. Uh, this morning I woke up for a wee about half past four. It was getting light already. I had a good sleep last night. Really good sleep last night. Woke up about half four, only once uh, to have a wee, come back to bed again, and I noticed it was always already starting to get quite light. So that was about half past four, and I could hear a wood pigeon. Woo, woo, woo. Open the window, and uh, it sends me off to sleep. But not this person on the TikTok video. Hates it. Hates the noise. And it's just down to you what noises you like and what noises you don't like. I miss Concord flying over this house. Twice a day. First time was about, uh, around about 11, 11.30 in the morning and 7, 7.30 at night. Every day it used to come over. How I miss that. It's a long time ago now that we lost Concord. How ludicrous. How ludicrous that it now takes us, uh, you know, here we are. I don't know, what is it 10, 15 years on? It now takes us longer to get to places like New York than it used to. That option is no longer there. What a shame. Dreadful shame. It was an accident. Why they took them all off because of that accident, I do not know. Terrible loss of life, of course, for those people on there, but they should have left it on there, I think, uh, or carried on. Um, Shania's just received a delivery of ice cream homemade by a local business. Oh, my God, that sounds nice, Shania. That sounds very nice. Uh, send some to me, my darling, please. There's a drone coming my way later <laughs> to try and nick this. <laughs> That's all right, Peter. Thank you, Kevin. I'll just check I got your email there. Uh, not yet. Not that. Uh, okay. Maybe it'll come a bit later. Let me refresh that. No email from you that there, old boy. Okay. Let's just put it out there. You want to check the email address that you've sent there. Okay. Uh, John does the other half. My other half does the handshake tip too. He's very generous. Oh, yes, absolutely. James loves tipping. Good. Excellent. Uh, what other service do you pay for, Chris? <laughs> Nothing else, sadly. What about you? <laughs> uh, Rachel hates the noise of cluttery banging gates. Cutlery banging gates someone's teeth. Who does that then? Who does that? <laughs> Mick sends my Michael Lawrence that cap, did you? Oh, I can't remember that. Oh, he's got that angry face. Your heart, Mick, I'm telling you. Your heart, dear. <laughs> All right, what else have we got here today? Uh, loads. Well, I had, I had loads. It was quite easy to prepare the show. Because, of course, I used some stuff from yesterday that we couldn't do yesterday when we were having the internet problems. But it was the, it was the net because my neighbour was having the same. When I went out to cut the edges, I said, you had problems this morning with your internet. He said, yeah, about 10 o'clock. Kept going on and off. So it was definitely that. Yesterday afternoon, incidentally, I was sending out a live stream. You wouldn't have seen it. I, I, it was only it was set to private. Uh, and I had it going out for uh, about, four, about five hours. And I came back in the room, you know, went to sleep, got up again, come back in the room. It was about five and a half hours. Nothing went wrong at all in that time. Uh, set at the quality that this is set at. For those of you that are technically minded, uh, I set the quality at uh, about three and a half thousand KBS. 3,500 KBS. Uh, I've tried 4,000. We tend to get a bit of dropout on 4,000. Uh, anything above four is uh, is a problem. It, I keep getting red flashing lights. It may be that the six meg I've got going up doesn't can't quite cope with that, but, you know, that's how it is. Uh, Andy, Andy doesn't like scraping off the plate with a knife or fork. Goes right through. Oh, do you remember the chalk on a blackboard? Oh, have we forgotten forgotten the likes? 20 likes. We need five more likes to show you our wonderful pictures. Come on, gang. 
Five more likes and I'll show you uh, wonderful pictures today. Uh, Mick, what have I got to do to get recognition on the show? Okay, if you promise not to send any messages for the next three months, I will mention you and possibly provide you with a certificate, Mick. <laughs> uh, yes, Peter, Virgin Media have been having quite a lot of problems lately. They're possibly doing a big upgrade somewhere, and that's just how it is sometimes. Right, now, I had a feeling that most of you have or have had coronavirus, and here is the proof. Here is the proof. In the Daily Mirror this morning, researchers at Oregon and La Trobe University in Melbourne, here you go, there you go, an Australia, one for um, our Australian friend there, have warned that coronavirus is causing psychotic episodes for some patients. I knew it. You've all had it, haven't you? I knew it. You've all had it. Uh, they got the high fever, the Grytoff. Forget all that. The psychosis. It's psychosis. Uh, a doctor who's a uh, leader of the study, said it's a very stressful experience for everyone, particularly those with uh, complex mental health needs. We know that psychosis, the first episodes of psychosis, are commonly triggered by substantial psychosocial stresses. That's you lot! See, I knew you've all had it. So you must all be immune by now, because you're all psychotic, aren't you? Be honest, you are. This is it, it's in the Daily Mirror for you to see. Uh, there we are. I knew it. Psychosis. Coronavirus can cause psychosis. So that's it. I knew. I knew you'd all had that. You'd all had that. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, how are you doing with your broadband? We're talking about Virgin Media Net and broadband. Um, there's a lot of people with families in the house now, whereas you may well have, uh, whether you're a young person trying to play your computer games or an older person perhaps doing some sort of other thing on your computer. <laughs> Someone like me who's got nothing better to do than turn it off and moan for a couple of hours each day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it says uh, a story here in the Daily Mail, uh, a family of five, uh, and each day they must decide who gets priority as their broadband cannot cope with them all using it at once. The family, the Scott family, are not alone. They are just one of many families plagued by broad broadband problems when stuck at home. Uh, Fiona is a media consultant. She is regularly disconnected from important video meetings if another member of the household connects to the internet on another device. Her husband works in telecoms from home while her children uh, have university and school work to complete and they're all using the internet. Thank you, Colin. A little tip. There are no small tips, Colin. A pound is a pound, dear. Pound is a pound. You know, I don't care. It's just nice. It's nice to know that you're doing something that people enjoy and they send you a little tip now and again. And I appreciate that. And for my appreciation, you get a free raffle ticket as well. One, two, four. Uh, Colin K. One, two, four. And one, two, five. There you go. One, two, four. And one, two, five. Okay. Colin K. One, two, four. One, two, five. In there for you. And next, next uh, Super Chatters raffle will be for you next Thursday, right about the same time, right? Uh, she says, uh, this goes, goes on. The mum says, if David's having a Spanish or maths lesson via video, I get I can't get cross, but it's hard when I'm being paid by the hour for my time. And it takes three hours to do something because I keep getting cut off. Experts say the uh, uh, pandemic has exposed the antiquated state of Britain's infrastructure and are urging ministers to press ahead with vital importance. And uh, as, um, as uh, Peter uh, said a little while ago, Virgin Media have been having uh, a lot of problems. And I wonder if it's just down to the stress of um, of all the uh, people that are using the broadband at the moment. We never, I never had a problem here, have I? Really? Occasionally, we've had a little problem, uh, but yesterday was particularly bad. Yesterday, uh, but that's how it is. Thank you, Mick. To oh, I haven't been doing the super chat. Remind me to do the super chat jingles if I don't do them. There you go. That's for you, Colin and uh, Mick Davenport. What does that say? It's a little, little. What's that say? Mood. What does that say on there, Mick? 
mood, it says. Anyway, 126 and 127 for Mick Davenport. There you go. Because the clocks, unfortunately, uh, the way the clocks are, uh, they weren't particularly dear to buy or anything like that. There you go. 126 and 127 for you there, Mick. Okay. They're not particularly expensive to buy. It's the postage as well. And you add on that, and then you take off the 30% that YouTube, and they were coming out as something... I think they, they I managed to get them down a bit on the postage side of things. But it's still, if you were super chat, the price of a clock, which uh, Rachel did uh, actually uh, some time ago now, um, it was like 35 quid. And, you know, you, I mean, this is not worth £35. I'm telling you that now. You can buy a plastic clock on Amazon for like three quid, right? But it, they are made, and that's why it's so dear. That's why it was so dear. So, you know, a couple of quid here and there, you might win it. It's probably worth it. Uh, would I do it? Yeah, I would. I would for the clock, yeah. Absolutely, I would. Uh, and Adam the Plumber as well. Five pounds super chat sheet. Mick can't find an angry sticker. Oh, there must be one there, Mick. I'm sure if... <laughs> I'm sure if you look hard enough, you'll find one there. Adam the plumber. Let's just do Adams. Um, and uh, I, I wonder if it's the amount of people that are on the internet at the moment. I suppose... You see, I don't know. What, what is a peak time for the internet to be used? Or maybe that's changed since there's so many people working from home. I, uh, I had a FaceTime yesterday. Thank you, Adam. OK. Five for you there, Adam. All right. I had a FaceTime... Um, last night with uh, a friend, of, uh, yesterday afternoon actually, uh, with John Glazenbrook. You've seen him uh, pay, play the quiz. Incidentally, I'm looking at some different quiz, qu quiz questions. Uh, there was a couple of people, they say they're really hard. And I looked at them and I thought, well, I didn't know the answers to those. those. And <clears throat> so I've, I've looked, got some other quiz. We're going to do current affairs next week. So keep an eye on the news, all right? Keep an eye on what's going on in the news and um, uh, where do that. Uh, as one of the rounds, I've already got, I've already decided what the music round is. This is for next Tuesday's quiz at eight o'clock on this channel. We'll have a current affairs round, and uh, but we can't have everything too easy. You know, it would be absolutely pointless to do. Uh, okay, question one: What is one plus one? You know, how do you spell it? Yeah, it's, it's just pointless. Got to test your knowledge there. Got to test your knowledge. Um. Uh, yes, and I, I think it's because there's so many people working from home. And while I was talking to my mate, his other half, uh, he said, oh, oh, Matt's at work at the moment. <clears throat> I said, oh, is it, where's he gone to? Where's he going into work? No, he's sitting over there. And there he was in the corner. He's got a little corner in the room. He's got on the table. He's got his um, uh, either computer or laptop set up there. And he's got a little earphone on, you know, where he's taking calls and that. And this is how we, this would be the normal thing, you know. We talked about this on the show, didn't we? Huh? Yeah, from, from a business point of view, if you are the owner of a large company, I don't know, Barclays Bank, why would you want to rent <laughs> these, these overpriced offices in Canary Wharf when you can have people sitting at home? You haven't got to pay for them. To, you haven't got to pay for this enormous building. I haven't got to do it. This is, this is coming. This work from home has been suddenly pushed forward. And I think it's blooming marvellous. You win all round. You win all round. It's good for the environment because when you go past these offices, no one turns the lights out. All the computers are on. Everything's on. If you're sitting at home in a corner and you finish your job, you're not going to leave that on, are you? Using your electricity? I don't think so. So that'll all go off. You won't have to leave your house. We need three more likes, boys and girls. Three more likes. Then I can show you the pictures and videos today. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, uh, where was I going with that now? You won't have to leave your house, get in a nice, nasty cold car, get on a bus with disgusting people coughing all over you. Won't have to do any of that. Works all round, doesn't it? Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a look. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Let's have another look there, Kevin. Still nothing from you. Maybe I'll come... Oh, there we are. You've gone into spam folder. Twice. Okay. Uh, okay, let's just... Um, uh, how do I put that in the other folder now? Uh, I don't know. Archive, delete markers, red snooze. Delete forever. What's that do? 
Oh, hang on, that's that thing. Um, Mark has read forward as a... T How do I do this now? This message seems... Oh! I've, do you know what it says on your email? This message seems dangerous. Sim oh, hang on, we've got to have... A, have we got any danger music? No. Oh, yes! Yes! This message seems dangerous. <laughs> Similar messages were used to steal people's personal information, avoid clicking links, downloading attachments, or replying with personal information. That's what's just come from you. Dear me. I'm very scared now. Very scared. What have you sent me? You are trying to steal my secret information. I'm secretly working here from the British government. You're going to sing my stuff to the Philippines. Send my stuff. I know what you're up to. Okay, so I've got that email. That'll be on its way to you later on today. Oh, yes, it will. Uh, that, uh, there's my exercise for today. I shall cycle down to the delivery office. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the broadband thing. Are you having problems with your broadband? I wonder, are so many people perhaps in your house um, and it, they're all kind of fighting over the broadband at the moment? I mean, you could always, if you were like on Virgin Media, I'm on Virgin, I'm on the 100 meg one. Uh, with about five going up, which just, just about copes with the video screen going up, as long as I don't send it too fast, as I've worked out. Although, you know, even if I was to upgrade, the, I did have free 50 meg ones. I got fed up paying 50, 50 odd quid a month out for it, just for the broadband. It's expensive, man, isn't it? It's expensive. Um, uh, it says the UK average household has up to five devices, iPads, laptops or smartphones, uh, connected to the net at the same time. Yeah, don't forget televisions as well. A lot of televisions are plugged straight into the internet now. Is my one downstairs is? You know, the one upstairs and the one in the kitchen, they're older. They don't have the smart thing on there. Although the one in the um, uh, in the bedroom has got a, an Apple box, an old Apple box on it. Yeah, you know, there's a little tip for you. If you want a smart telly, right, but you can't afford to buy a smart telly. Get, get onto eBay and buy an old Apple TV box or something like that. Plug that in. You've got a smart telly. You can then get the YouTube and all that on your uh, on your telly. Wonderful. Cheap way of doing it. Or uh, what's that other thing? The now, I, I, I don't know if the now boxes do it. There's loads of them. Loads of them. I think Raku. Raku. Something like that. Raku. Anyway, it says, how to beat slow speeds. If you're signed up to broadband from BTEE plus Net Sky, Talk Talk or Virgin Media, after March the 1st, 2019, last year, you can cancel penalty-free if your service drops below the promised minimum speed. Okay, so that's not bad, is it? If you took up broadband before that date, you must wait until your contract ends. And a lot of contracts, well, most of those will be ended now, aren't they? For a year, usually, these contracts. And it says, keep a log of the interrupted service. So there we are. Do you have problems with yours? Um, let's have a look here. Uh, I've done your, yours, haven't I, Adam? Uh, Rachel, there's there's their jobs on your channel, Chris. Mick Twiddle Moan, Peter Twiddle Groan. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my tat, Mick. Or talk, whatever you call it. Um, uh, yes. Start your router start sometimes. That's a good way to do it as well. Restarting your router. And the reason that some a good reason that sometimes work is because of all your Wi-Fi signals. If someone might have got another router in another house near you, and it might be using the same frequencies as yours, uh, certainly with my Virgin router, if I turn that off and turn it on again for the wireless side of things, it will then seek out the least congested frequency. And we'll lock you onto that. Doesn't really affect this show, though, because I'm plugged into the router with cables. I don't trust the Wi-Fi enough to um, uh, not be plugged into it. Claire, best thing ever, working from home. You need to be disciplined, but it's always worked for me 37 years. Yeah, you do. Uh, indeed, if you're self-employed in any way, shape or form, you need to be self-disciplined as well. Uh, you know me. You know my work ethic. You know my work ethic. I'm, I get to work far too early usually, so I'm going to set up and be ready. Whether or not we'll be able to do that again, I think is very iffy. I'll be honest with you, Claire. I, 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 you know, if there's any chance that by me going to work, I'm increasing my risk sort of reasonably much uh, of catching some coronavirus thing, 
I won't be going back. It's as simple as that. You know, it's no good saying to me, oh, well, we'll give you a mask and gloves. No, no, thank you. Not worth it. I'm kind of almost at the end of my DJing thing now anyway, aren't I? You know? Oh, 57. That's just how it is. I really feel sorry for some of the young people, though, out there who've just started in any sort of entertainment, singing, DJing, uh, anything like that. And um, they may have been going two, three, five, ten years even. even. And those that are in the middle as well. Anywhere they're in there, suddenly, nothing. All gone. Dreadful. What are they going to do? That's all they know. And entertainment type people. Not so much actors, because actors... They know they haven't got to work a lot of the time anyway, so they've usually got something else going on, haven't they? You know, like, I don't know, accountant or supermarket, and then they get that big part. But just because they got a big part in this, uh, that finishes, you know, might have got a shed load of money for doing that, and then it just stops. They will be used to something like that, a lot of actors. Singers, DJs who have got regular jobs, regular jobs coming in. I know some of my friends in the club DJ world, they were on a lot of money. You know, we were. We, I was on a lot of money in the uh, 80s, 90s. I was. Um, and then that suddenly, you know, from, from all that money to nothing. And the sensible ones will have been paying tax and will get something off this self-employed thing. The other ones, well, I hate to say it, but it serves you right. You should have been paying the tax and that's it. Um, Colin, <clears throat> the price of... Lost that now. The price of real estate in most cities is crazy. A lot of companies are reassessing their office space requirements as a result of the lockdown. Yeah, they certainly are. Why, you don't need it anymore. Don't need it. Who's going to come a cropper here? The greedy office landlords. Yes. And the greedy shop landlords as well. Some of them take an awful lot of profit. Awful lot of profit. I mean, how much money do you need? Christ's sake. I don't know. Um... Mick's working from home as well, as well as working his way through the fridge. <laughs> uh, Peter, his upload speed has gone down. Mine's running at about five and a half meg. Five and a half to six meg most of the time, mine. Um, I, I will actually try that, restart that router later anyway. Uh, Andy Andy's on 100 with Virgin. Yeah, same as me then. It's been slow the last week. We've got about six devices connected in Andy Andy's house there. Uh, Sean went around his neighbours, complained about their internet speed, but I've hacked in their, into their broadband. <laughs> All 23 likes. Come on, two more likes. Two more likes and I can show you the pictures and stuff like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kevin's getting very excited. He's going to get his hat. Uh, if I go to the delivery... I will go to the delivery office. you probably get it. Uh, your so was it Thursday? For I'm sure... Oh, no, there's no Saturday deliveries now, is there? You might have to wait till Monday now. I don't know. You might have to wait until Monday. Uh, Claire, can't imagine when I'm going to feel comfortable singing karaoke again. Holding a microphone with your mouth is too risky. You could, Claire, buy your own. Now, if I show you the connector of a microphone. Right. Funnily enough, this is, do you know this is a brand new cable, which I put, I bought a new microphone, didn't I? Where is it now? I bought a new microphone and um, where's that? Oh, it's up there. One of these. I bought another one of those so like, I could have guests in. And uh, there was a particular guest I wanted, but he, he didn't uh, he didn't come back to me in the end. Um, and I bought that. And this is a new cable, right? And I thought I'd try it out the other day. Uh, blooming cables died already. How does that happen? I'd take the damn thing apart and solder it. Oh, I can't be bothered. Just buy another one and be done with it. That's the connector you'd want, Claire, probably. Either that or one of the large jacks. I've got one of those here. You could buy... and Sorry, I beg your pardon, Claire. That's what you would be plugging into. Let me show you. <clears throat> OK, now have I got a microphone here for you? No. I haven't got a spare one here. All right, so that's... See that three-pin thing? That's what you want on the end of a microphone that you buy, right? And the DJ will normally have one of those. OK, nine times out of ten, it'll be one of those. So you could have your own mic, just grab this and it plugs in like that. OK, and, and away you go. You could do that if you wanted to. Or for a cheaper thing, you know, you could get one of those and that would just slide over the microphone if you wanted to. But you're still among all those people. Nah, it's not for me. Oh, of course I miss it. Yes, I will, but I, what's, what's the point in risking my life for what? 
<clears throat> another three years work of worth of work or whatever it would be. I'm fifty, like I say, I'm fifty seven now. Three or maybe I get a little bit more out of it if I was lucky. I don't know. Yeah, all all jobs, all these entertainment jobs come to an end eventually. It doesn't matter how good you are, or if you're or bad. Come to that. Uh, look at Bruce Forsyth, sacked from Play Your Cards right years ago by some young upside who decided he was too old for the channel. That could happen to me. One minute you're flying along and then suddenly bang. No, I don't want you anymore. Thank you. I think people are quite nice about it, but that's just how it is. That's how it is in this game. That's that. That's entertainment, as they say. Really? <clears throat> you get a new manager in. Thanks, Chris. I know you've been here a long time, but I don't want to do karaoke. I've had that. That happened. But as you get older, you get used to this sort of thing. And that's fine. Thanks very much for all the money you've paid me over the years. Thank you very much. Goodbye. That's it. Move on. End of. Don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, you could get your own one there. Uh, John's not had any posts for three weeks. That's funny you should say that, John. I've not had any for a week now. It suddenly stopped. Someone's stealing my letters. Is it you? <clears throat> Adam, Adam likes the gadgets. He's got 18 devices connected to his internet there. Gosh. <laughs> 18 devices he's got there. Um, he's a managing agent because Adam's got a property as well that he lets out. Um, he lost... Uh, so, can I tell him this story? Yeah, you're all right. We're just like, yeah. he, he had a very dear friend who, who um, he looked after uh, incredibly well. And um, his friend left him house. So he rents that out. And his managing director spent thousands of pounds. So I bet, Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to manage an agent. I didn't read it properly there. Uh, my managing director of the firm he works for, because he's a plumber as well, looks after a lot of train station toilets and things like that. Uh, my managing director spent thousands of pounds so far on tests for us each week to check how we are and now installing a thermal imaging camera to check our body temperature uh, when we come into the office. I'm not sure if that's a protect you or the bloke or the managing director, to be honest, Adam. <laughs> Mick says the show must go on at least until the lockdown's finished. Well, this show will. I'm, I'm, you know, this is quite nice to sit here and do this. And then you finish at the end of the night, you turn off and that's it. But um, if I'm if I'm not happy, um, I mean... The, Oh, we, we don't really want to go into all that, do we? The whole lockdown thing and all that. I, I I just think he was too slow moving. And I think letting everyone go out and go out and do all this, I think this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. People banged up against each other on buses. And no masks. <sighs> um, Let's do some more. So we've done the face. I showed you the face masks earlier. We did that earlier, didn't we? With my new face masks. You can be fined up to £5,000 for picking flowers. Do you know that? £5,000. Daily Mirror. Chris Bonnet from GardeningExpress.co.uk reminds British people that picking wildflowers is an illegal offence. So be mindful on your daily lockdown walk. Now, I've seen this. I've seen people digging up bluebells seriously i have i have seen people digging up bluebells you can buy a hundred bluebells on the on amazon for for 20 quid why would you want to go around and dig up one uh, i've seen it people digging up bluebells around here shocking and picking wild flowers and you can understand when a small child does it but you got adults doing it no you can get f serious fines for this uh, British people have been allowed to leave their house daily to get fresh air since the lockdown. People have been warned not to pick wildflowers while out walking. They could land you with a hefty £5,000 fine or even a prison sentence. Plant experts explain that there are laws in place to stop people picking flowers such as Iria, such as bluebells. Are they, are they rare? The bluebells are not rare, are they? Uh, bluebells or daffodils, so don't be tempted. Uh, these laws fall under the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981 and the Theft Act of 1968, which means that any flowers in public parks and on roundabouts owned by the council are off limits, as are flowers on verges, nature reserves or uh, private lands. Uh, but, I mean, we know that anyway. Do you know, again, this is like a common sense thing to me. Surely you know common sense not to go and pick the flowers sitting on a roundabout that are all like you know all nicely laid out so sometimes they do letters don't they you know they make like the letter of a t and they've got that in um what's that ghastly place in essex 
begins with Basildon. Basildon. Oh, Christ. Oh, it's rough around there, dear. Rough. And there, I think they've got there the word Basildon in flowers. Looks very pretty. A lot of places do that. Surely you've got common sense to realise you're not allowed to pick those flowers. Or in common grass along verges and all that, lines of daffodils, that, beautiful daffodils that come up in crocuses or croci. Crocuses? Crocus? Croci? They come up, don't they? No, you're not allowed to pick. Oh, shock horror. We're not allowed to pick those. No, you're not. Dreadful people. Dreadful people. Um, uh, Peter's got 18 devices connected to his. Gosh, that's a lot. Um, Kevin, we have keep having brownouts here. All the power going out. Really? Oh, the back end of a tropical swamp. I've never been to Philippines. I think I'd like it there. I think Filipinos are beautiful people. Absolutely. The colour is beautiful with their skin, isn't it? And mind you, mine's not far off that, is it, at the moment? Look how brown I am. How are we doing on the likes? 25 likes, right, we've got some stuff to show you. Got loads to show you today. Are you ready, boys and girls? Here we go. This is a long show, isn't it? Oh, dear. This is a long... We could be here three hours today. Here we go, then. First of all... Let's show you this one, boys and girls. Roy Brownlow is very, very pleased with himself. He won the clock on the bingo on Sunday night. He's got it already. There you go. Look at all the stuff he's got now. He's got the lot. Has he got everything? I'm trying to see if there's something in here he hasn't got yet. Um, he's only got the white hat. He hasn't got the blue one or the, bra or the black one yet, has he? So there we are. He's got the calendar there. Lots of um, super chat badges, I think. He's got he's got big. Oh, he hasn't got one of these. I don't think he's got the green, the green raffle fridge magnet that we do at the moment. Don't think he's got that. So uh, thanks very much for that, uh, Roy Brownlow. Uh, John says you'll love the Philippines, Chris. I, I, I would love. I'm sure I'd like it there. I'm sure I like I like um, I like quiet as well. You know, I like jungle. Yeah, I like jungle Yeah, and forests and all that business. Right. Okie doke. Uh, Peter Paliwoda. He's not with us this morning, is he, Peter? Uh, he sent us this photograph. He says he's learning the harp. <laughs> Peter, let me see if I can find his email. Here we go. He says, I'm going slightly mad. I'm learning the harp in lockdown. UK 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. All right. Uh, we've got here um, Mark Jones. Mark Jones has recently been for a walk and he sent a couple of pictures. It looks beautiful where he walks. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? I don't know where that is, actually. It's a shame he's, he's not put too much on the email. If you want to send us a little story as well with whatever you've sent in, that's great as well, boys and girls. But uh, that is particularly lovely, isn't it? I love that church there. Look at that. That's that's a Church of England church. You can see how it's square. It's like a tower rather than a spire. That uh, almost all the time, that means it's like a Church of England church there. All right, so that's some pictures from uh, Mark's uh, walk there. And Sean Pye has sent us in a video. Now, where's Sean's video? Let's see. Sean's got an email there somewhere. Uh, maybe there wasn't too much on there. No, Sean's uh, not there because it was self-explanatory. So here is a short video of Sean's garden. There we are. I like the steps. And I like that weathered look. I quite like that. That's a bit um, uh, kind of rough and ready, shall we say. See, I quite like that. You see how it's been left to just grow naturally and has... Oh, there's a lovely thumb there growing out of the side of his wall. Look at that. And what, what's that thing? Is that like a, a, a fish pond? Some plants there. Here come the fish pond. You'll be able to see the fish in a minute. Here they come. Look, wait for the fish. He's doing a bit of building work as well there. There's the fish. Look, look. Now, they're giant goldfish. What are they called? Oh, uh, carp. Carp are goldfish, aren't they? And there's his back gate. What's in there then? Or oh, what's in there? Danger of death. Danger. Danger. Danger of death. Danger. Danger of death. Thanks very much for that, Sean. Uh, I want to know what's in that cupboard. Can, can you take us in the cupboard on another video, please? <laughs> 
<laughs> we want to see what's in that cupboard. I think that's all your bits and pieces you've sent in uh, today. So thanks very much for your likes. Uh, if you've got anything to send in at all, there you go. That's the email address. Send it to there. I'll check the spam folder as well. Some, some, because people are trying to send me viruses. Uh, David, nice fish and chips. John, the koi carp. Is that what they are? Are they just giant goldfish? Koi carp. Is that what they are? Could a goldfish grow to that bit size and get and get stuck? Won't be able to go around in a bowl anymore, will it? Adam used to do karaoke. Uh, I had a pub that I worked in, built it up to 150 people every Sunday night. New manager came, didn't look at the book and cancelled when he realised mistake trying to get me back. I hope you said no, darling. I hope you said no. <laughs> no, thanks, mate. I had that from someone we were, we know very well, actually, Adam. Yeah, oh, yes. I, uh, I went from a place and uh, someone replaced me and it really didn't work. And he tried me to come back. No, nope, I had another job. Or how much do you want? No. Well, what are they paying you? So I told him. He said, well, I'll give you this. No. No. How can I leave somewhere who's been decent enough to give me a job when I ask for one? No. That's the other thing you find with a lot. Not, 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 not everyone, but a lot of entertainment people, they will go where the highest money is. Not always the best way, thing to do. If you're happy with somewhere and someone has given you a bit of a loyalty and you've asked for a job and someone's given you a job, you stay with them. Don't worry about the extra 50 quid Fred Bloggs is trying to pay you down the road. Nope. Stay where you are. Unless something's really upset you. And then you go. That's it. Sean has got a nice big garden, hasn't he? It's love. What's in the shed, Sean? It says there's danger in there. We want to know. Have you got some sort of monster in there? Don't even say about your wife. Don't you dare. <laughs> have you got some sort of monster in there, Sean? We want to know what's in that danger to life shed there. <laughs> I'll just scroll up there. Um, right, is that uh, everything there? Beautiful koi. Sean, my auntie breeds them. Um, anything more about the fish? Yeah, Rachel loves the fish there. Excellent. Beautiful pictures there. Anything else you want to send in? Do it there. If you've got a little story to put there as well, put that in your email as well. And uh, we'll read that out. Okay. Um, you can now play virtual escape rooms online. People go to, I think there's a place in London that's got these escape rooms. You get locked in this room and you have to get out of it somehow. <clears throat> it said, board of zoo. I've seen some dreadful pub quizzes on here. Really amateur looking. Awful. Um, board of Zoom pub quizzes. Try a virtual escape room instead. This is in the Daily Mirror. It says, since being in lockdown, British people have swapped their usual social plans of dinner and drinks for Zoom quizzes and Netflix marathons or YouTube. I don't know why, why is no one doing it on YouTube, these quizzes? Don't get it. Hardly, I don't think I've found another person doing a quiz on YouTube. I've seen Facebook Lives <clears throat> and I've seen, I, I'm not signed up to Zoom or anything like that. I looked at it. I thought it was really complicated, Zoom. Or is that just because I haven't used it? I think Claire uses Zoom, don't you, Claire? Eh? <clears throat> Mick says, that's where Sean's bondage operates. <laughs> is that right, Sean? What have you got in there, dear? Come on, take us. He's got something dodgy in there, right? Because he hasn't answered any of our questions about what's in that shed. Have you noticed that? He's got something dodgy in my... It's that bodies. That's... <laughs> it's... it's got bodies stacking up in there, waiting for burial. Um, since oh that was the other thing I saw on that on that hospital thing there uh, at the Royal Free their mortuary w uh, was almost full they had two spaces left so they've had to get in this lorry Refri seriously a refrigerated lorry that they've had delivered on site to store the other bodies it's the awful um, yes back to this story then in the Daily Mirror virtual pub quizzes have kept us occupied a couple of nights a week but what will we do when we're all quizzed out. Well, now you can try your hand now at an escape room, either with your friends or by yourself. If you've never been in an escape room, that's me, uh, it's a game where a team of people are made to solve puzzles and clues in order to escape. But it's completed in an, allot an allotted amount of time. So you you've got so long to get out of the room, you see. It's the perfect combination of brain training and spending quality time with your loved ones in lockdown. Result, up for the challenge. There are five different escape rooms to try in trappedintheweb.com and you are able to take part with anyone in the world, either solo or as in a team. So that might be of interest to you. Sort of 
a computer game, I suppose, basically. Text your chosen teammates and make your way into one of the rooms on offer. But choose your team wisely, as all the rooms will challenge all of you, and you want your chances of and you want your chances of escaping to be pretty high. Apparently, it says each room takes an hour or two to complete, depending on how easy or hard you may find them. Different rooms are Schools Out, which is beginning, A Night at the Theatre, Intermediate, Cabin Fever, Intermediate, or Out of Hours Expert. So if you want to look at that, it's called trappedintheweb.com. Sounds interesting, that, doesn't it? Trappedintheweb.com. So if anyone uh, goes on that and has a go, do let us know how you get on with that and how easy it is perhaps to uh, uh, to get in or, or out of it. I don't know how it works there. Uh, Jason would give us a tour of his garden, but you need to imagine the M25, cars everywhere. Oh, Christ, have you got one of those, have you? Bits of blooming cars all over your garden, dear. Get rid of them and get some plants in there, my love. Nice little rhododendron in the corner. And of course, don't forget the lilies. Have I told you about the lily beetles? Have you seen the photos of my lily beetles yet? Oh, I've, I've taken them off now. No. <laughs> That's what you need out there, sir. Lilies. Lilies and lily beetles out there. Um... <clears throat> Uh, Rachel loves virtual reality. She's got virtual reality with a PS4. Oh, wow. I've never had one. I, I can't, don't think I've ever. Yes, I have. I have. Um, who was it with? My nephew, Jimmy. Yeah, in Florida. I think we had a virtual reality headset on somewhere. Uh, where on earth was that? Might have been, no, it might have been at Great Universal rather than Disney. I seem to remember a, 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 a virtual reality headset on somewhere. Yeah, I have. They're very good. Very, very good indeed. Yeah. And you can go anywhere with those on, can't you? When I say go anywhere, put them on and a selection of all these different places you can visit. I'd probably be interested in the natural history thing rather than games. You know, to be able to... um. To visit Africa uh, and just by putting these things on and be close to the tigers and things. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, have you done anything like that, Rachel, with your thing? Uh, Kevin needs a beer. Alcohol ban where he is there. Oh, dear. Adam, I, I did say no on the, to go back to work because I went to the pub across the road and said that what and said that I what happens uh Oh, you told him what happened and he said start straight away. All customers came to that pub and no word uh, word of a lie. The other one closed after a year. Good, serves him right. Serves him right. I love things that happen like that, Kevin, uh, Adam. Good. <clears throat> you see, no chest complaint. <sighs> Nothing. It's, anxi it's got to be anxiety, isn't it? Jason kills Beatles, VWs. <laughs> so that's that little story there. How are we doing? Um, I've got three more stuff. We might as well do this. Let's stick it out, shall we? I know I've been here two hours. I can't believe that. Gosh, this is the longest show ever, isn't it? Invest in a PS4. I've no interest in, in games, honestly. Uh, my two nephews, they're obviously much younger than me. They love it. They're on those games all the time. He's talking to his mate for a little headset. Oh, his bloke coming up behind you with a gun and all that sort of thing. They love it. I have no interest in computer games whatsoever. Really, um, I I only discovered who wants to be a millionaire is back on the telly, but with um with the with the car bloke in it. What's his name? Uh, I can't think of his blooming name now. What's his name? You know the car bloke, the one who upsets everyone because he's got common sense and they don't get him. <laughs> uh. Millionaire fans gutted. A contestant correctly answers the one million pound question, but doesn't get the jackpot. Ah, oh, never mind. Who wants to be a millionaire? Viewers in the Daily Mirror again were devastated as retired uh, GP Andrew Townsley won five hundred thousand pounds. <coughs> no cheating going on. Uh, but could have won a million. Uh, you see, five hundred thousand pound. Now it. It sounds a decent amount of money to buy, doesn't it, uh, to have. But I have to say, I, I don't think you'd get very far with it. I, I really don't. Certainly, 
If you live in London, perhaps you've got a council flat in London, and you won £500,000, and you've got some idea in your head that, you're, oh, fantastic, I'll be able to buy a house and retire. No, you won't. £500,000 in London isn't going to do it. If you're of an age, uh, let's say, 60 and over, and you already own a house anywhere in the country, right, and you won £500,000, brilliant. That's enough for you now. You don't need any more. If you're a young person, as I say, living in London, £500,000, you might get a flat for that. Might have a little bit left over. But it'll soon be gobbled up, that will. It's not a lot of money to win, actually, £500,000. A million? Yeah! Again, but small property. Spend half of it on your home, whatever you're going to buy there. And you might, you, you'd be OK for a while, but you certainly wouldn't be able to retire on a million pounds if you were young and had just started work and living in London, I would say. Well, uh, this bloke, he was retired uh, and he won £500,000. GP probably owns his own house and has paid for it by now. You see, he had one lifeline left, which he used to phone a friend. The final question was about which of the iconic races was first held in the history of motorsport. I wouldn't have known that. The potential answers were Le Mans, 24 hours, Monaco Grand Prix, Indy 500 and Isle of Man TT. Now, I can't see the answer. I'm going to go for... Monaco Grand Prix on that. I'm completely guessing. There's something that says to me that that might be Monaco, Mon Monaco Grand Prix. Maybe it's the one that I know most in my head, but we'll see. And it goes on. Let's have a look. Their friend didn't have any idea about the correct answer and Andrew decided not to risk it. However, Andrew managed to correctly guess the right answer. And fans, so he, he, he took the £500,000 and then they, he told him the answer and he was right. Uh, fans were gutted for him after being left on the edge of their seats throughout the episode. Uh, one tweeted, what a, guy, what a guy, who wants to be a millionaire? Another commented, gutted, but they, he was still a true legend. Uh, are they not going to tell us the answer? Oh, no, we haven't got the answer. Well, what was the answer? <laughs> Is there no answer there? He correctly guessed the answer. He decided not to risk it. No, they don't tell us the answer. Oh, how annoying is it? Anyone know the answer to that? What was uh, the most iconic races first held in the history of most support? Let's, uh, perhaps I'll type it into the Google. Which of the first? Let's, let's see. Let's see. Type it into Google. One moment, please. Trying to connect. Um... Uh, here we go. Uh, well, Trivia.net says the Isle of Man TT. Does that sound right to you? Does anyone know that answer? TT, oh, everyone's saying TT there. So the blokes, the proper blokes, I know what that one is. John Parrish TT. Thank you, John. John Parrish TT was the answer there. But, you know, um, I, would, I wouldn't have grumbled at £500,000. Uh, that would see me off. That would, that would do me. That would do me straight away. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't keep it all for myself. Oh, absolutely not, no. I mean, there's my nephew and then I'd send them, you know, 20 quid each. I mean, it's only right, isn't it? You know, even my sister. I'd probably send my sister immediately, uh, straight in the envelope, £10. Absolutely. This is my sister. You've got to look after the family, haven't you? <laughs> um... <clears throat> John's just dug up his tulip and daffodil bulbs. What can I do with them? Let them dry or plant again? I think you're supposed to let them dry. John, I'll be honest with you. I don't do that. Um, and that's probably why my daffodils come up blinds now. They, they don't flower anymore. You are supposed, I think, to dig up a l certain bulbs. Not all of them. Not bluebells. They can. I'm sure bluebells can stay there. But lots of bulbs you're supposed to dig out once they've expired, done their thing. Um, but not before the leaves have died down. I'm sure you've got to leave them in for the leaves uh, to absorb the sun and put more energy back into the bulb. Um, but you're probably doing the right thing. Dry them out. Tulips. Um, have the leaves gone yet? Have they gone sort of brown? Once they've gone brown, then I think you can dig them up. But the tulips I leave. I must admit, I leave the tulips in the ground. 
Yeah, they come up every year. Um, oh, Rachel got close up to lions on her YouTube channel. Oh, I'll have to look at that. I love them. Uh, John knows all about anxiety. What's wrong? Sweaty hands. No sweaty hands. No, a uh, little bit of just just tight chest, tightness on chest. Tightness on chest, which is fine at the moment now that I'm doing something. My mind's off it, you see. <sighs> no problem. I think that's what it is. Uh, hello to gadgets and games. Hello to gadgets and games. I make him happy. That's the idea. We like to try and make people happy. Like to pe give people a bit of a laugh. Don't take things life too seriously. Too many people out there taking life too seriously. Jeremy Clarkson, John, John and uh, Adam there. Thank you. Um, did you used to go live on your PS4? I don't I don't know anything about. Oh, as in the, look what my nephew does. I don't know what machine he's got. I thought he had a PS4. He sits there playing with his friend Paul McIlroy, who's in uh, London and various other people. <clears throat> Sean says Jason's front garden is full of old washing machines and that old sofa when he sits there with his dog drinking moonshine and playing the banjo. <laughs> I've got that image in my head now, actually. <laughs> Rachel's on Twitch. Oh, I'm not on there. Twitch. It, it made me twitch too much, to be honest. <laughs> Mick says I'm tight. You must be joking, Mick. 20 pounds is enough for that lot. Dear me. Overthinking starts it off. I'm sure that's what it is, John. I'm sure. When I'm not thinking about it, it's it's not there. I start thinking, oh, is my breathing okay? And then, almost immediately, I need a puff of that. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, <laughs> stop that, John. Right. Um, I think we'll drop that story because that's a bit boring. Uh, <laughs> I'm that one. Uh, f uh, one more story, one more story, Claire, one more story, and then we'll do the raffle, so get ready to, I think we're, it looks like we're going to possibly, how many of you there? We might even be starting another book of tickets today, I think, I shall prepare that, so, these, we, looks like we're going to start another book of tickets, but not yet, hang on, give me a chance, where are they? There they are, one moment please. Well, I have. Oh, yes. Get those. Uh, I, I will hold these tickets and stand it. These tickets are standing by to be exposed to you for the first time and the beautiful colour that they are. Oh, yeah. Shana's not having her five pound. I've decided. She's not having it. I can't. I'm, 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 I'm going to put it in the church. Oh, we can't go to church either, can we? All right. Um, five guys a week. Dirty cow. Greedy cow, this one is. This is in the Super Sora way. Very right wing. Daily Express. Five guys a week, right? Get this. This is a television show. I mean, surely you wouldn't shout this from the skies. Five guys a week is a dating show with a difference which sees five men move into a woman's home to try and rule her. Dirty cow. There used to be a name for people like that, my love. Will there be another series? Well, yes. Five Guys a Week made its debut on Channel 4. Surprise, surprise. Da, 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 da. That one. It made its debut on Channel 4 earlier in 2020 and the series went down a hit with fans who compared it to Love is Blind. Don't know what that is. The series, here we, here we are, the series follows a number of women from all walks of life uh, who are put in charge of finding their dream man. The extraordinary series sees all five men, five, moving into the women's home at once. And it's down to her to whittle them down to one. Be like having a room at chariots, John. God's sake. The quirky dating show started airing following a successful pilot episode. Each episode features a new woman and five new potential male partners and all fans are wondering who will be next to host it, host the living boyfriends. Executive producer Barnaby Coughlin. Well, it's, it sounds a bit of a perv, doesn't it? That name, Barnaby. You think so? B 
fuck. I mean, as soon as I saw the name Barnaby, I thought, yeah, you'd be the sort of person that would make a crap programme like this. She spoke... Ex She spoke exclusively to the Express about the prospect of a new series and he is staying positive. The domestic stuff is really fascinating. The funny awkwardness over breakfast or queuing up at the toilet. That's a programme. You could have made a programme every day. There's a lot of footage we were not able to include. I bet there wasn't. Dirty cow. Of course, we want another series. What has been really lovely about this is that it's a bonkers idea. Yes, it is. Well, I can't be watching dreadful soft porn like that. Not on my television downstairs. I've got I've got filters on my telly downstairs. Any body parts come on, it goes off. It just switches itself off straight away. It's disgusting. On normal, t if I want to come and watch something like that, I'll log in to one of those sites. Don't want to watch that on my normal telly. We want Dad's Army on. 24 hours a day, please. Oh, dear. The five potentials. Who? Why is there not a gay version of this? I mean, I might... No, sorry. The five potentials who were headhunted by the women went everywhere with her, meeting her... F I bet they did. I bet they did. Meeting her family and friends and going on dates. I think there might be a sentence missed from that paragraph. Don't you, boys and girls? Dear me. Uh, producers said the idea was to skip the formalities of dating and throw the men into her deeper... Into the deep end. Dreadful. I mean, can you just imagine jumping in with someone and you've not even spoken or know their names? Can you imagine that, John? Dreadful people. Ghastly people. Awful programme. Awful programme. Um, Kevin says, um, oh, so you're talking about this show, are you? <laughs> Absolutely, Daniel. Bring back blankety blank and call my bluff. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I could do that. That sounds that sounds like a good TV theme TikTok to do to me. Call my bluff. Ba, 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 ba. I, might, I must write that down. I won't do it now. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> Come on then, let's do the raffle tickets. Oh, when's he gonna do the raffle tickets? I, I'm gonna do them now, now. Let's have your raffle ticket, raffle ticket numbers. Uh, who wants a raffle ticket for tomorrow's show or today's show uh, for m the next raffle, which is on Monday? Uh, speak now, my darlings, and we'll do that. Uh, Dad's Arm is on 24... Uh, IPTV. What is that, IPTV? What is that? IPTV. I don't know what that is. IPTV. IPTV. What is that? Eight ninety nine a month, dear. We can't afford to have that, love. I've got Netflix. That's bad enough. Five pounds. Dear me. So expensive. John Aiken. I mean, five, five people in a week, she has. I think she's a bit of an amateur, to be honest, John, don't you, dear? <laughs> Here we go. John Aitken, 989. Uh, Colin K, 990. This is for Monday's raffle, OK? Here's the prize for Monday. You know what it is. It's one of our delightful fridge magnets. That's Monday's prize, a fridge magnet. Okay, sweethearts. <clears throat> uh, 991 goes to... Colin K was the last one. David Fryer, 991. Colin Coates, 992. You must sell goldfish in your pet shop. Do you, uh... Do you, um... Uh, David or Koi Koi Carp is it Koi Carp or both? Are they are they the same thing? Goldfish and Koi Carp. I was asking that earlier. Maybe someone oh, I didn't see their message earlier. Colin Coates, Michael Lawrence nine nine three. Uh, Claire nine nine four. <clears throat> Rachel nine nine five. Who's going to get a thousand? Who's going to get the 1,000? 
uh, Sean996. Love, I like your garden, Sean. I really do. You haven't, you still haven't told us. He, no, have you noticed? He hasn't told us what's in that shed, has he? He's not told us what's in that shed. Body parts, I'm telling you now. He's been topping people up. <laughs> uh, no, so, can you imagine one of the left wing watching now? Oh, that's really not funny. People being chopped up and put in sheds. <laughs> what is it with those people that don't find anything funny? What is that? Or they see something that's not... They don't get irony or... Uh, what's the other word? Irony and uh, the other thing. Seat, Seat, Seas... Oh, God. Seattle? Seat, 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 something going to S or C. What is it? Irony and the other thing. They don't get it. They just don't get it. Unless it's black and white, they don't get it. Thick, stupid people. Uh, Sean Bates, none of them are near. Look, we're not thick. Kevin James... Thank you. Uh, 997 for you, Kevin. Uh, Jason, Mick likes virtual reality games. He practices them out in the burnt out cars in his street. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy, 998. Oh, who's going to get a thousand? Uh, Mick Davenport, 999. It's Adam the Plumber. <clears throat> 1,000 for Adam. Look, you got you got you got a thousand, Adam. Look, thousand, Adam the plumber, one thousand. We're now moving on to a new colour ticket. What colour could it be today? Oh, look, peach, dear, peach, beautiful, beautiful. Did you know I was amazed a few weeks ago? And here, here is an example of the people we've just been talking about. Here's an example, right? So I'm giving out, I was giving out these tickets like this. You know, here's the first lot here, right? Okay, uh, right? So I carried on, so I was giving out these tickets. And then I think it might, I think it was an email. Someone emailed in for a ticket. And the ticket, were, we just changed books. And the ticket might have been like something like eight or nine. And I got this email back. And it, this person, I can't remember who it was now. They said, um... How can, how can I have ticket number eight? He's obviously watched the show and seen it get to a thousand, and he or she, whoever it was, had got eight and couldn't. And he had to ask why he'd got eight, or he or she had got eight, when we got to a thousand. Why wasn't it like a thousand and eight? Oh. Next. Adam the Plumber, Shania, ticket number one for Shania. Oh, hang on, let me pull them out. Shania is in the house. Shania is head of the Catholic Church on the Isle of Wight, incidentally. Shania, she's not got a lot to do at the moment. Yeah, did you see Shania on that on our live church stream on Sunday? Someone's taking them around some flowers. Did you see that? <laughs> Hoping for favouritism, no doubt. That's the sort of people, that's what they do to priests. They start giving them gifts, cakes and things like that. Hoping, you know, that that's going to get them in the gate of heaven a bit quicker. That's what they do. They want favouritism. So they start taking the priest's presents. Cakes and flowers delivered to his place. Ah, I'm not getting involved in anything like that. I won't have any favouritism. Thank you very much. Shania, ticket number one. There we are. Peter Wright, ticket number two. Ross Herndeen, ticket number three. Jason Hughes, four. Mick, oh, done Mick, a minute. There's our sprinter van sitting there all quietly again, aren't you there? One minute, where has it gone now? Sprinter van, sprinter van, sprinter van. There he is, sprinter van number five. Uh, Fran, number six. Uh, koi carp and goldfish are different. Okay, thank you, George. Um, uh, internet streaming service. I, I don't know what that is, uh, ISP TV. Uh, Tony King, seven. I've got enough TV, to be honest. Ah, never, never short of uh, cynical... No, not 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 cynical. Satire, 
Satire, that was it, John. They don't get our and our satire anymore, especially the uh, the millennials. Oh, they're too busy being offended by the latest thing. You know, I did a TikTok video, a, a particular one. Um, and I looked at it and I thought, that's eh, funny. It's not offensive to anyone. Oh, they were going mad. Rachel will tell you. They always still like saying it's disrespectful and all that. No, it doesn't disrespect anyone. It, it showed you exactly as it was. Nope, didn't like that, did they? The, the private emails that were coming. You're no hero. Oh, dear me. Get a life. I don't, I don't respond to anything negative anymore. No. I just delete them and block them straight away. Can't be bothered with people anymore. Um, how are we doing on these tickets? There we go. We've got Tony King's there. Um, Sean's got sharp tools in a freezer. Is that all you got in there? Oh, sharp tools. That's why it's dangerous. Danger. Da oh, hang on. Where's my mouse gone? Someone stole it. Danger. Danger. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we don't have vicars. How many times do I keep saying that? No vicars. Do, do, do. It's not pink. There's nothing like pink. Peach, dear. Peach. Peach. Pink. Peach pink. Christ. Oh, I, I, sorry, Mick. I apologise. You've obviously only got a black and white computer. <laughs> Mick still, she's got a valve operated computer, haven't you, Mick? He can't see the colours. <laughs> Shania, she's got a lot of things to do for the church at the moment. Well, you, yeah, testing out all the wine more like you and your dad and your brother. They sit there testing the wine for church. We're just going to test this one there. A little bit like 20 to 12? God's sake. <sighs> um. Bu Let's, uh, have I missed anyone out there? Let's have a look. Hello to Tay. Good morning, Tay. Diane Jeb, thank you. Uh, my son was talking to me. I might have missed it. No, we haven't done you, Diane. I'm sure I haven't done you, Diane. Didn't see you ask for one, my love. There we are. Uh, number eight for you, Diane. <coughs> Diane Jeb, number eight. Um, uh, okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is that everyone? Uh, Gary Butler's show is the, oh God, the Scrap It Man. I think it's Scrap It Man is Gary Butler's show. And James Humble is number nine. Thank you, James. James, uh, you're, you're a student, aren't you, James, somewhere? No, you're not, you know, you're not number nine. You're number, yes, you're number nine. I'm sorry, James, number nine. There you go, number nine for James there. All right, all happening there. Uh, anyone else's tickets? If I've missed anyone out, please speak now, my darlings. Okay. Meanwhile, it's time for today's birthdays. We've got seven today. Happy birthday on this um, Thursday. Is it Thursday? Thursday. Happy birthday on this Thursday, the 14th of May, 2022. Mr. Daniel Gannon, 36 years old today. Daniel used to be a customer at the Black Cap, not the, on the second time that I got around there. So happy birthday to you, Daniel. Uh, Louise Johnson today, 45 years old. Happy birthday, Louise. Nikki Mills today, 49 years old today. Morning, Nikki. Happy birthday to Nikki. Uh, Carl Wood, good morning, Carl. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Liam Connolly, greetings. Happy birthday, sir. Uh, and Eric Lawton today is a young, 59 years old. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Twice, twice, coronavirus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Buh, buh. Happy birthday. Okay, uh, dog gang. 
There we are. And that's it for another show today. Thanks very much for joining us always. Don't forget, gang, if you've got anything to send in and you might have a little story with it as well, uh, send it through. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk is my email address chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk i shall go straight down to the post office and uh, post office thing once again thanks very much to kevin there uh, for giving someone is someone's address uh, his other half's address in london so that's uh, much appreciated uh, that'd be a lot easier to post it down there than it will anywhere else i'll jump on that I'll, I'll do that straight away i'll jump on the bike uh, take that down to the delivery office you never know they might, might even get it tomorrow if you're lucky all right Okie doke. Have a lovely day. Thanks very much for watching and listening. And I'll see you tomorrow around about the same time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>